Hey, everybody. Welcome back to DLC Required, a podcast where gamers talk about gaming and whatever gamers talk about. I'm your host, Speaking Lion. And this week, we have an exciting guest. We have Riley from Friend and Foe Adventure Co., a Borderlands Bunkers and Badasses Echo Cast. It's a TTRPG actual play podcast. It's Dungeon and Dragons meets Borderlands video games. Honestly, an absolute blast. Riley, the BM, joins us, the Bunker Master, if you are new. It is a thrilling episode of all kinds of neurodivergence rants and Borderlands rants and the community and games and D&D and, you know, all the good things that make Wonderlands and BL2 and Bunkers and Badasses if you haven't played it. A lot of random shit because that's what we do here. It's a conversation of random shit. So let's go. Let's get into it. Welcome back, guys. No, it's fun stuff. I'm looking at all the games behind you. I know I've like seen before, but I haven't like been able to like see this close, oh, obviously. But I'm just like, <laughs> hell yeah, hell yeah. So many games. I know. I need Too to like get many games, display. probably. Me with anything that I start having, like we we keep all of our board games at my girlfriend's place because like their roommates are like some of our best friends, and like they went to college together, so we have just like an enormous amount so anytime we played a game i live alone it's it, we're gonna play it over there so i would get a new one and be like yeah. oh keep this version of villains do this like whatever you know and now i feel like, but we haven't played them in years because we've all just been so busy so we just keep collecting these games that i'm like i don't know why we have like we'll be at a con i'm like oh that would be a good game to grab for mel i'm like why we don't need another like there are too many games <laughs> and we always do the same thing we we'll go play betrayal on hill house every time we're like fine whatever oh, but man. we have a little bit let's pull it out because it's just easier and then i'm like this isn't we we need more space and and or more time and or more games and i don't know which it is but i don't want to keep buying yeah that was <laughs> yeah. like when we moved from an apartment to a house i was like i pretty much just had like a wireframe yeah uh shelf that i would put and it was and that was like overflowing and then we got a house and i was like oh yeah like i have an office here so of course so like uh i got this shelf one shelf and it like held all my games and then it started getting overflow like it would overflow and then i got this other shelf and it holds most of them but i still have a couple games on the ground or like you yeah know, stacks of them like above hot we love it and just like i'm a that's, that's with, a mess I that's just, me with crystals like right it above grows yeah it just it keeps growing and every oh, yeah. time you think you haven't bought as many recently it's like i'm doing that with dice right now i like because we've always like oh, just yeah. buy it because you just have too many dice right but like which, it was so funny i so <laughs> this is so dumb and this is like it sounds gatekeepy but it's really not because i don't give a fuck but um i was sitting um <laughs> over over at my girlfriend's house uh the other week and they were at work um they work in theater so they were like working late and the roommates were home and I'd come over because we squeezed in a D&D session before they went to work while I was working. And I was just like, oh, I'm not like, I'm I'm totally doing emails right now. We're playing D&D real quick. But um, I I ended up saying because the roommates came home and we started talking and one of them was playing Baldur's Gate on the TV. And I was just sitting on the couch, you know, going through my own stuff. And I was like working on like Pinterest D&D boards, like doing nothing good with my life. Right. Like just absolutely going down this rabbit hole. And our one neurotypical friend that we really call him all with all the love in the world. He is, he is our token straight friend, token neurotypical token, whatever. And I'm just like, this is you, you, you exist in this bubble around us and I don't know how, but this is how it's always been. And so um, we're on the couch and I say something about the Dungeon and Dragons movie to Mel, who's playing Baldur's Gate. And I'm just like, yeah, like I hear, um, you know what I heard, I haven't seen it yet, but I heard it's actually like really good, but like all the fight sequences are done in like six second, like, you know, blocking and it goes in initiative order and like all this stuff. And I was like, from a filmmaking standpoint, that's just like my brain is like, oh my God, I want to dissect that. She's like, oh my God, that's really cool. Yeah. And a camera and the guy in the middle goes, uh, are we talking to the like the Chris the Chris Pine Dungeon and Dragons movie? I'm like, uh, I think so. Yeah, like that. Yeah, the newest one. He goes, oh, it was okay. It wasn't that good. And I was like, well, I'm talking like people who are like really into D and D. Were like, oh no, it was surprisingly really good. You should like you'd enjoy it. You should see it. And he was like, I'm really into D and D. And we both just like looked at him and we're like, I are no you're not like it's it's fine like you can be like that's cool and he's like no i i i played D in that D play in college i like i still have that dice from from then and we just stared at him and we're like okay okay your your dice your one pair of dice from 10 years ago you want to go talk about like yes okay yes you you can be as much into D as you want buddy um 
you've played a one shot. You've played a one shot in a play and in freshman year of college. Like, I I love you. I would love to not care this much. But no. But it's like it was one of those moments where I just always am like, how did I become this person who just like went for so many years of, you know, I'm going to like feel like an adult in my adult apartment and have this and not buy phantom stuff and do that. And now I like look around and this handsome Jack cut out behind me and like the, you know, hundred dice sets that pile up or the video game vinyls that are everywhere and displayed. I have Nisha's hat on the yeah. wall right on this. And I'm like, how, when did, when did this happen to me? <laughs> like it just, yeah. now I'm 30 on the couch being like, um, but are you like really into the indie? <laughs> what being an adult is, is just being able to buy whatever shit you couldn't as a kid. And being a bitch to your friends about it because they were like, yeah, they were like, exactly. oh buddy, buddy, you're, you, you were at work all day and came back and were a normal person about everything. None of us here are being normal about this. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> like, it's yeah. Just, that's the power of adult money and um, adult time, you know, I wouldn't say prioritization, yeah, exactly. but just anything. It's joy. It's fine. I feel like it's impossible, though, not to get more dice as you played like any TTRPG. Because like even my wife, who I would say, you know, like she's in the she's on the podcast. She's played yeah. well over 60 sessions of Bunkers and Badasses. Uh, like she probably wouldn't consider herself like very nerdy. And she's not very nerdy in a lot of ways. Really? But she she like gets excited to buy dice. She I think she has They're more pretty. dice than me. They're pretty. Yeah. I also like I can she does she know how to casually like things? Because I'm always amazed by people who are like into the nerdy stuff that I am, but like don't make it their their brain doesn't take over to this like lizard brain state because I don't know how to do that. And I'm just in awe of people who can like I'm committing to this hobby, but it's a hobby and it stays in this hobby box. Like I don't. Yeah. <laughs> my brain it drives can't. me crazy yeah. sometimes because she loves like diamond painting or like paint by numbers stuff right like yeah she does those kind of hobbies it'll be like oh great like i'll paint miniatures uh you know from board games or whatever we'll be painting and we'll paint for like an hour and a half and she'll be like all right i'm good to do something else and i'm just like are you but like i haven't finished my miniature like i <laughs> i get so like hyper there is nothing else on only paint. zool <laughs> like it is very yeah exactly yeah. When she wants to switch doing things, I'm just like, it, it like startles me and rattles me to my core because I'm just like, how? This don't is you no longer like, a safe space. <laughs> like, I'm literally, yeah. though. No, I, I was like that where I I hadn't been taken by, like, the Borderlands hyperfixation had, like, I say, I, I really put Borderlands in this, like, special interest games in general, but, like, when you love something so intensely for so long, it finally becomes just, like, another limb I forget is on my body sometimes. So it's just kind of like, I can move on with my life. It's fine. But the moment that activates, the moment I, I become aware I have an arm, I'm like, this is all I'm thinking about. I have an arm. What is like, what am I doing? That's Borderlands. Yeah. So like we'd be walking around cons, we'd be doing stuff, traveling, whatever. And I can always at any point in time, like tap in, rant about it, do the thing, dive into it. It's fine. D and D have been one of those things where like, I hadn't had like a proper, you know, campaign with people. Cause I was like, always like the nerdy one in the group leader, but like the more extroverted one, it just like never worked and like where I grew up in high school and like stuff like that. And um, it was like dice was one of those things. I just like had some through the years from like people or other people who were really into it or cosplays I had and all that. But my girlfriend at cons always like really wanted to like look at the dice and they're so pretty. And I just like buying stuff for them. And it was one of those things. I'm like, no, it's fine. And they were like, no, if we're not like playing, playing, then I feel like there's no reason. I'm like, I have so many crystals. Like, it's the same thing. They're just pretty. It's fine. And I was the enabler. It's fine. And now I'm the problem where I just like, <laughs> I definitely encourage it. And they're equally as like lost in the cyber fixation. But the moment our current campaign took over me, my DM, and then their brains, oh my God, nothing else has joy anymore. Nothing else sparks joy. More dice, more this, more like for Valentine's Day. I was like, here are these rocks glasses that have D20s and D4s in the glass. Actually, like the bullet glass I have for you, but now you have this and then you have this ice tray. Like it is, <laughs> it is wow. um, hyperfixation, baby. It's um, expensive and cruel, <laughs> honestly. I love it. I totally yeah. relate to it. It's, yeah, I, it's, I love doing, I love collecting. I love hyperfixating. It's just, it's fun. It's, it's more fun. And like with Borderlands specifically, I feel like I have so many. Um, if, if there's a piece of Borderlands merch that is available online, I have it probably. 
And it's just one nice. of those things where at least like D&D, I can find new stuff that I don't have all the time. There's always content to like learn and consume. I feel like I am the content for Borderlands. Like I like have encyclopedia, like knowledge brain. And then there's like some like technical stuff I can go look up about the game. But in general, like there's no there's no new nugget I can find in canon in the games. And I can't wait yeah. for the day that I'm wrong about that. But like for now, I'm just like people will come in a chat and be like, oh, yeah, did you know that, you know, and here's a slightly wrong fact or something. TPS will be like, well, actually, this echo here, like I will actually the shit out of people with Borderlands lore. I'm like, this is this is a problem. So um, at least I can find uh, fun, you know, dice towers and stuff. I can't buy that stuff for. Yeah. Borderlands. Yet. Yet. They really should. They yeah. really should. Well, I mean, I do see the book behind you, right? Like, yes, the. The world sort of lore bible I, somewhat i with all the love in the world to 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 my 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 friends and loves who wrote the book i think it's a really cool concept of a book i like that it's done in that still in this fictional world retelling where it's one of those like lemony snicket-esque kind of <laughs> moments where you still have this yeah. like narrator there are so many contradicts contradictions in the book itself from what is in the game and that and i don't mind the retconning because i feel like retconning is better for usually things overall because it's for the sake of a story and um it happens in all media all the time and so i'm having a hard time going what's retconning in this book and what is unreliable narration and what is just no one looked into this and forgot they already did like it's one of those things where it's like i want it i wanted it to be like a hey i needed to look up steel let me let's see s let's go through here let's flip through and like it wasn't and so i'm like okay i love it for what it is however um it just invites more questions and things like how old the twins were when leda died and then it's like that alone i can't let go like there's no mention of the fall of new haven in this book at all there's not a single mention of it oh yeah it drives me oh bananas. Like, this is all the, I was. That's all I wanted. I like I need this timeline. I need to know. Like, I just this is what I want. And then they didn't give it to me. And then they didn't add anything that wasn't really in the, like, whew, whew, I got a bone pick. Sam Winkler. I got a bone. Yeah, pick. it's fine. I just I, like yeah. I was noticing that, too. And I was like, maybe I just don't know it well enough. You know, like maybe I I missed this. or No, something. it's gaslighting like, us. It feels like it, yeah. OK, <laughs> it's gaslighting. And. and yeah, like I was definitely thinking, you know, like almost uh, to the victor goes the spoils, right? Like it's almost uh, yeah. somebody retelling it and uh, from their perspective, you know, like of exactly. there's bias that's influencing it. Which works for like the Borderlands vibe in general with like Marcus being, you know, the narrator and especially in New Tales, like that breaking at the end of having this. Oh, he's actually talking to Fiona like this is him telling someone in a story versus, you know, we're the we're this you know fourth wall break for him and so i'm like i'll let i'll let a lot of it slide but i need follow-up answers and i don't know if i'm gonna get them and i don't think i'm gonna get them but i need them (laughs) and so i'm just like okay this is this is this is really cool and i love it there are things i love about it but um i don't i don't know i mean i laugh at myself anyway because as much as i love game lore and lore in general i i do know i'm probably in one of the minorities about being rabbit over Borderlands lore, I feel like most people who play these games aren't necessarily replaying it for the plot. And I'm like, that's fine. I'm but with then, you, though. Thank you. And I'm just also like, then don't be such a bitch about the plot if you don't play it for the plot. Like, <laughs> I know. Like, oh, you don't Ava. like the, the Calypso twins. Calypso's oh, you don't and like Ava. Ava. I'm like, there's not a single hot yeah. take someone can come and give me that i haven't heard and everyone says it with like their full chest like this is like the newest take you've ever heard and the most correct one it's like i don't know i just don't like ava i think Maya wouldn't have died so easily like great they confirmed she would have died anyway can we move on like can we like she is dead it's fine or like uh, oh if the if the funeral stayed in the cut of the game then it would be different i'm like why why is that different but then the fact that no one liked tina when two came out until dragon's keep and now we've like reimagined liking Tina at the beginning, but like Mesha's board hated Tina. I just, oh my God. Yeah, there's no, there's no, I describe Adderall to people who haven't like found like ADHD meds. I'm like, it feels like some days I'm suddenly like, there's no executive dysfunction. And I'm just like, why aren't I like calling the doctor back? Let me just do that. And it's great. But most days it's yeah. like, and it, oh, dude, I'm so mad every time I'm like, why didn't I do this years ago? Like, I'm so mad. But like most days when I'm just like, mm, still, mm, we're, we're very ADHD today, but at least we have our meds. It's like, I suddenly have a cage around my thoughts. So even if they're going like, at least they're in a cage and I can like 
grab some or find or like find them again without it no yeah. there's no there's at best a fishing net with a bunch of holes in it at best day possible and it doesn't it doesn't work at all um which ironically yeah. is you know playing things like tabletop i feel like bad for that like the paying attention and you know all of that but it's part of the appeal because things are moving generally either fast enough or you need to be thinking about so many different things at once that you're allowed to like your brain can get that full 100 percent that it's trying to get when it's you know multitasking and doing all that same with borderlands yeah for the most time because i feel like the color and the the numbers on the screen and the stylization is a lot for like that kind of like part of the adhd where you need the stimulation and it not being too much but yeah that's at least that's my current theory of why there's so many um the neurodivergent loves obsessed with tabletop at this point because I don't know how else I sit here for like six hour sessions and like it's all I want to focus on and it's all I'm focusing on. But I'm also like flipping through notebooks and doing that and changing. Like I just I'm the worst note taker, but um, have a lot of notes. Yeah, (laughs) I totally get that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, my wife records with us and usually we record like three hours, two to three hours a session. And she's usually like ready to be done. Uh, Yeah. If we go to like four hours and I'm just like, man, I could seriously go like eight hours. This could be a full time thing for me. I would do it. I would dude, limb, like cut off my limb. Like I all I want to do, like to make that my full time job right now. Like that's all I it's yeah. I our DM. So we're we're in a very, very small campaign right now. Um it's uh me, um, our DM and uh my girlfriend. And literally we're going to a cabin in May to take off work and for three days just play D. like we're like adult vacation who it's fine and we're like we're like pretending to talk about the fact that they're like oh yeah we can like there are like a couple of restaurants or like there's this cool bar like oh look they have a hot tub and it'll be fine we all know all we did when we looked for airbnb we were like what has the comfiest couch and a good table and then um that's it and there's this one weird little closet that kind of is considered a toddler's room that just looks it, it looks like a cupboard under the stairs situation kind of thing. And we're like, oh, that's where people go when we need to tell secrets. And it's not like we are planning every minute of this. Like <laughs> all we are doing is for 72 hours playing D&D. And honestly, I bet that's what will happen because we're always like, well, no, you need to sleep. And our DM's like, um, I'll sleep on the plane back. Like this is why are we sometimes you're sleep deprived for D&D. And it, that, that's what it is. I'm like, this is yeah. I love that we've met. We, we have the match of best friends who are like, no, we're all equally too much into this because yeah i have so many other friends who are like your wife and a very healthy kind of amount of you know attention to it they're like oh yeah sessions are like two hours three hours at max four hours and if we have we have one six hour session every week and then we end up squeezing in like two three four more during the week and the weeks we can't do that we're like i don't what are we like i go to saint jude next week and we don't know how we're squeezing in another for the week between all of our schedules and i'm like we can't only do one next week because we're going to be rabid we're going to be problems and you know it's hard when it's <laughs> at least with at least with borderland stuff you can like or really any game you can turn on more content when it's your own D D campaign you can't really do that yeah you can only like think about it but yeah you're like ready to go you're ready it's yeah you're just like yeah i yeah you, you can't just turn and on the a stream in the background and like have it going. You can't just like, yeah, consume other content for it or read about it. It's it's all you. What did get you um into like, what was the idea for doing your podcast and doing this like such long form uh, Bunkers of Badasses for it? Because honestly, like, I feel like Bunkers of Badasses doesn't get enough love at all in general or people don't know. I'm surprising how few people actually know it's a real thing now um and yeah. so the the concept itself is really cool but you guys are dedicated like this has been going on for a while and so what what really yeah. got that brain worm going they were like oh no this is this is what i'm doing <laughs> this is my hyperfixation now <laughs> well uh i had been obsessed with borderlands since before it came out like i i have somewhere i have like the game informer that has the old graphics hell right? yeah like, hell yeah and I was so excited for it before the graphics change. Or maybe that, I can't remember if that article had, was saying, like, doing the comparisons between yeah. them. I can't remember. Anyway, uh, so obviously this has, like, uh, been my hyperfixation since 2000. Yeah, 2009, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and so um, at PAX West, as soon as they announced it, 
uh, like I, yeah, I was watching it live and they had that very goofy, fun, like, you know, here they are in the lab testing it and making it. Uh, and so I was like, yeah, I, I, before it was even over, I was like, I have to do this. And my mind was like spinning with all this, like, you know, uh, alternate reality of uh, my, I can make my own Borderlands stories, right? Like, and it doesn't have to be canonical. It doesn't have to be this or that. And uh, that was really, really exciting for me. So I like, I pre-ordered it that minute as soon as it was open like Mood. before the stream was even done so excited uh and then it just kept hitting delays because of covid right uh so i had like it's one of those things where i don't have access to it but i can sure come up with ideas for it you know and like i don't know how it's gonna be but i'm gonna try it and uh so so that was like the big i i think i was let's see i was listening to what's it called why am I spacing that? The Adventure Zone. Have you listened to like any oh, other, yeah, yeah, other yeah. actual plays? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So like my friend had got me on The Adventure Zone. I had been listening to that. And so it was like, oh, yeah, that's totally a thing people do. So I that's what I want to do. Yeah. Uh, and part of that is because, you know, like. I think a lot of people who play Dungeons and Dragons, like the big boss, right? The actual enemy of Dungeons and Dragons is scheduling. And yeah, yeah, yeah. There's that scheduling dragon. And I thought the the best way to counter that is to make a podcast to where we like people are committed to playing it. And at that time, I was like, I just hope my wife will join me. And I hope my friend Matt will join me because they both played Borderlands with me. And at that, uh, I was like, other than that, I don't know who's going to be on it. So then I started a podcast to learn how to edit and stuff and how to socialize because it was a pandemic yeah. and I forgot how to talk to people. Uh, and that was like the board game community show. And that was just like interviewing people. And uh, so I learned to edit through that. But the whole entire time, it was kind of like, my goal is this bunkers and badasses actual play. Like I can't wait for it to come out. And it just kept getting delayed. And then they sent us like a demo. Oh, nice. 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 First quest. Yeah. So like I recorded that and with some people that I had met through the, my uh, podcast and that was so much fun that i was like yep this is gonna work this is gonna be this is gonna be great and originally i was like this isn't gonna be canon to what we do uh once we start it but then uh it ended up being canon because one of the characters was the same and yeah uh, it was just like okay well, great uh but um i remember like i i also decided to not stick with you know like using characters from Borderlands. In that one shot, the quest for the wizard's wand, there's Marcus, there's Moxie, there's Claptrap. There you know, there's all these people throughout it, but I was like I don't want to be tied or beholden to like these characters, so I'll kind of make my own versions of them uh and we'll set it outside of like uh Pandora and Wonderlands. We'll just make it our own thing. Uh and that's been really fun and Later, I think I saw somebody, maybe it was Matt Cox, who did the bounty. Uh, oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Blood. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Like he would. Somebody was talking about like how they wanted to do some stuff that could get away from the characters, you know, like. Because they don't write like anybody who's writing this at this point, like uh, Sam Winkler, right? Or yeah. uh, Dante Silva, like all these writers, right? Like. They didn't create these characters. They may love them from playing them, but like, how nice would it be to like be able to go and explore your own characters? You oh, know, for like, sure. Make Absolutely. your own characters and, instead of that like heavy pressure of like, well, you didn't write Ava or you didn't write Maya well enough or you didn't write Lilith well enough because like they're coming in and yeah, writing yeah. a character that they you know like. I think they did a great job, but whatever. I know, so no, yeah, I'm like I, anyway. I got my opinions on it, but yeah. Y- yes <laughs> uh, me with opinions yeah, like, on borderlands shocker i know never never I in my know, life right never in my life <laughs> yeah me me neither yeah so, no but, no but it's been fun like i love it obviously still and i'm so surprised we're 60 we're over 60 episodes in at this point sessions at the, honestly I call them episodes but they're sessions right they yeah. are i mean it's, it's, it's yeah yeah but no you it's, it's hard. hard yeah 
Yeah, like it's hard. And I was yesterday I listened to our first episode and I was like, oh my gosh, how do I how do we have any listeners? Dude, like, me, this me is listening so to any rough. of this. I like don't <laughs> I don't understand. I'm just like every time, especially if it's like an inconsistent because you're not controlling like other people's like setup or things like that or a connection issue or whatever. And so like yes. I'll go and I'll be like oh okay that's fine and i'm like at some point i need to go and like do the uniform like hey here's the audio back for the intro here's the formal intro here's this whatever and just like quietly re-upload stuff but i'm also just like oh my god it's gonna haunt me how the fuck how the fuck we're on like five continents and i don't know how like <clears throat> i'm literally just like i i wouldn't would i listen to this yes but i'm a gremlin so like i also am judging me and sitting here going like i don't even understand but no that's one thing that's impressive i feel like about yours is when i was going back through like like clicking through and you know getting the vibe of everything and because it's so much to it's like me getting into an, an anime i'm like oh my god there's so much lore to catch up on here where oh, do i yeah. start and so going back but i from an outside perspective i feel like your start and your now feel very similar like it it still feels like high quality and that you you have this vision for what you're doing which i think is really impressive honestly i i think i think all that's awesome and i i totally get that feeling of just like the instant like pre-order like ah this is this is what i'm doing but i think it's honestly the most genius thing you've done is be like mm, i'm gonna force this schedule this is this is what i'm doing this is now <laughs> this is now a responsibility <laughs> this is something that needs to be yeah. done um and i respect it i really respect it because it truly is the the bane of my existence is scheduling anything let alone D. &D. yeah and I, like because some people, I think, just figure like, well, it's a game, you know, like we don't have to if yeah. we need to cancel, it's not that big of a deal. But I think that everybody and I'm so surprised because like people have gotten new boyfriends, girlfriends, you know, like and yeah. uh, somehow have still managed to make it. And I always like, expected like, oh, no, dating is going to get in our way <laughs> for some people, you know, like and it hasn't. <laughs> but see that's well, why sort of. we do the genius thing though where it's like no your wife sit on it my girlfriend's in on it. like it's fine like it's part of yes. it it's part of it it's a date night <laughs> it's, yeah, exactly <laughs> it's fine this is this is a healthy healthy priority no i um i i feel that especially the more people you get involved and the more you know things even like scheduling this it's like the moment you have a new schedule to introduce once it's like in a routine it's a little bit better but it's really hard with time zones and then yeah, dating or people you know yes. they have family coming into town and things like that where you're just like okay like how do we how do we maneuver this but it's um sacred it's a little bit sacred and i keep using that word lately but it's it should be it should be sacred it's D. &D. yeah <laughs> exactly I, part of me wonders if we have a l nice little thing because one of us is in wales Ooh, nice. and so seven hours ahead of us so we have to do it like in the mornings nice. where i think if we did them in the evenings there would be way more conflicts yeah uh, so, yeah like, yeah usually but, we're done by like one or two my time i envy a little bit because right now our our dm's normally in canada and she's been in england for work for a while and it has made everything so complicated but we found a way to do it we found a way to do it but it's like because it's the middle of my work day am i like i have a job like kind of thing or then my girlfriend has to go in versus like we can't just in the morning do it because it's still too early while she's at work and so it's like uh, her evening but then it's the middle of our day and so then we're like i'm now just blocking out the middle of my entire day to do this at, on a whim and let me get creative with work which is worth it <laughs> it's worth it but it's hard um i feel like that's my yeah. thing though with um bunkers and badasses though is that i haven't played a ton of it because i've played the the like demo intro and i did get the free valentine's thing they dropped but yes. there's I don't know. There's like less. Um, I don't want to say like world building, like things like that. But like, I think because so few people, I, there are plenty of people play, but comparatively in the Borderlands like community, so few people who have like really explored it and made it their own and, you know, started these campaigns and whatever. Like, I'm really bad with like, here's a module. Here you go. Like, I so badly want to just like dive in and be like let's homebrew this shit or let's like really like flesh out this campaign. And so it's hard because so many, so many like following the rules of borderlands people who are either new to tabletop or new to borderlands it's like they feel like there are rules that they have to get into i'm like no there's really like you can still make it 
you can make it your own thing. We we can homebrew this shit. It's going to be great. Like, it, don't worry about it. Like, don't yeah. worry about, like, no, you're not playing Maya. You're playing a siren. It's different. And also, you don't even have to do that if you don't. It's, it's one of those things where I feel like that hurdle of the I am role playing one of these no name characters that I know what this character actually is versus like, no, just like get into it. Like, trust me, like, it's fine. And so I'm really excited to dive more into it. And I um, my chat's been on me to try to make like a <laughs> they want to Mercer affect me is what they said. <laughs> but they're trying to <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, that's flattering. It's never going to happen. But I keep dreaming. I love it. I love it. What a compliment. Um, But no, going back to the the lore book is. <laughs> The lack of Fall New Haven stuff. I keep talking about the fact that we're never going to get a Fall New Haven DLC, and I just want it so bad. They're like, "Well, what if you make a like, like a like a tabletop like expansion that's the Fall of New Haven and bunkers and badasses?" And I'm like, "Okay, but if I do this, I need like real production value." Okay, like we're doing sets, we're doing in person, we're doing that. Oh my god, could I get Damien to record a thing? Like I'm like literally already like this is too big in my brain, but I'm I'm doing it. I'm like plotting it out. I'm going like, what if I made a whole a whole actual play series for the fall of new haven and then i dm this and then i made the dlc and i'm like this is this is both the beauty of things like bunkers and badasses but then the problem because it's enabling my og hyperfixation and i don't need yeah. these two hyperfixations talking to each other like i'm grateful for it i do not need them talking to each other it is it is going to be the only thing i do it already is the only thing i do <laughs> It's so great to combine them, though. It is. It is. It feels. <laughs> it's like what I imagine. What I imagine. It just feels like, like, with like a drug hit at this point, where it's just like, yes, yeah, like this is this is the combination that I've wanted to exist that hadn't. And I honestly, it's a little bit afraid to start diving into bunkers and badasses for that for that particular reason because the moment I get comfortable with making it my own and doing a thing oh my god i'm going to ruin every other campaign i'm ever in and, and then i'm going to bring this in but that's it, it lends itself so well to the world of borderlands and i think part of that is we're you know yeah. gaslit a little bit with dragon's keep and wonderlands and stuff like that that it, it does fit into the world because we've made it a canon part of the world but it does yeah. just so it's so fantastical and i will say the one and i i don't know how you feel about this since you've played clearly way more than i have but i felt like the the intro to Bunkers and Badasses for me felt way more like it was it was kid gloving you in the way where like it wants you to win. It doesn't want you to have a TPK. It wants you to like, you know, play the game and is a little bit more forgiving than what I feel like, you know, Pathfinder or D&D would be at that point. And so yeah. it was a little bit like I need a little bit higher stakes to get really invested in it. And so I'm like, how do I make this more brutal? And I'm like, that's not, that's not the point here, babe. You don't got to do that. I'm like, maybe, maybe it's not, maybe like a long form. This wouldn't be I'm like, okay, but no, I need to find a way to make this less safe because it felt like I had way too many chances to do the right thing or like to ignore the dice being bad. It didn't allow the dice yeah. to tell the story as much as I feel like I would like it was very much more like here's your safety net <laughs> of how to do this and um which I think yeah. is great for intro and great for modules in general but what I feel like would be um sexy as fuck is if they didn't have that <laughs> <laughs> I totally feel that and because yeah when we do it like uh you know uh brew yous are a part of the game right like they're yeah. written into there there's a part where you specifically die you know like yeah it, it walks you through dying. You get a trauma. Uh, but what I didn't realize at the time was that, like, there's temporary traumas and then permanent traumas. And then Ooh. in the book, they're like, well, if you want to play with, like, potential permanent death, then you after you get so many permanent traumas. So you, like, collect three yeah. permanent traumas and now you're on your last life, you know? Like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. If you you won't get a fourth. And so there is, like, potential to die. Uh, and then I've also done things throughout um there was one arc where i pretty much put like you know like uh, a siren came and she had a device that stopped you from fast traveling from being nice. able to respawn so it's like if you die you die you know uh, yeah put that there's definitely things but it's homebrew right like yeah you kind of have to homebrew the tension in uh and definitely i let people fail uh and try and make some catastrophic, you know, like if they fail, sometimes it's catastrophic. Yeah. But most of the time, and I, I think it's just this way. You're a writer. Yeah. So like a lot of times, right, failing forward, right? Like 
I think that kind of helps with story because sometimes if they just like flat out fail it's not as satisfying it's not as satisfying and i feel like it's it's one of those things where as like a bm you have to really be okay with letting the story go where it's gonna go like because if and i know i know several people who are very very skilled at doing what they do and they're very almost like magician like we're gonna stay on plot here but that's one thing we talk about a lot where it's like we're nowhere near where our dm thought we would be for anything like i'm me single-handedly my character is fucked up so much and then like my girlfriend rolling so badly on all of because she's like playing amnesiac cannot roll to remember anything to save her life so i had to like reformat the plot near the beginning to be like okay why can't she still remember this and stuff like that where it's gone so many directions now that like it is that deep you know there is like we we play this week and i may get people killed this week like it it genuinely and we've had to be like okay well like what what happens if something like this happens and i'm actively betraying my girlfriend right now in real life in in the game and we there is constant contention about that in real life like because we are we are like deep attached to these characters in these worlds right now right (laughs) and so it is constant fighting about this and like love fighting not not like on the road but like it is it is personal and it is heated and um part of that my writer comes out like no here's the thing the angst is so delicious though because it's like it it's raising those stakes and like yes it's good and it's fine but like it is what characters would do in this moment. And I know these consequences that could be happening and know plenty that there are that I don't know that are happening and it will be devastating, but that's going to be the catalyst to either make me stop being an accidental supervillain or make you realize you have to kill me. We suddenly have PVP. Like, I don't know. That's interesting. And it's one of those where it's like, it's not remotely how the story was supposed to go, how either of us had envisioned this, how even beginning campaign, it wasn't like, but it's so cool because then looking back through, you know, you know, 30, you know, we, we've played over a hundred hours of this game at this point where it's just like how deep we are into it. And looking back on stuff from the first few sessions that like have this through line of thought that we didn't even realize where it's like the, the place my character is and now like literally, and just like who she's around and where the loyalties are absolutely makes sense for the shit. She couldn't let go earlier in the campaign that like, I had no reason to have her like be attached to it at all. And so it's just like the way it plays out when you let those failures kind of like completely uproot everything are great. And that was the one, the one thing with, um, and again, it's a, it's a adaptation of borderlands and a tabletop thing. Like it was no fault of it and it needs to be accessible. But that was my one thing where I was like, I want to find a way to like have this feeling of in this game, but make those type of mistakes because that's part of the like where the hyperfixation hits for me because you genuinely don't know where things are gonna go because even yeah. if you have a plan if you roll badly you're fucked or like i accidentally rolled great in a session the other week like we have this mini little let's just finish out this thing well like telepaths at work and then we'll just see what they end up scrying on it's fine and then i accidentally like just like i say i'm gonna do this one thing that then gave me just enough like bonus that she did not anticipate me doing at all and i didn't know would give me a bonus that suddenly this thing that we expected to take months in campaign to figure out i see in one scrying session of like oh here's how the apocalypse starts and we're both sitting there going like okay okay i mean that's that's the dice man that's that's okay this is this is fun but like that's a catastrophic failure that i feel like in a game like it, it works in like a cyberpunk setting ironically which is you know perfect because tabletop and the game like that but like that kind of like yeah. fatal error i feel like that you don't get that feeling in a lot of games um unless they're designed to specifically let you fail forward like that it's so wild to me you know like you get invested in stories and stuff and when i started this right like i definitely who is it uh mitch horowitz i think talked about like how writing comedy it's like you don't write comedy, you write story, and then the comedy comes in. Yeah. Right? Like, because if you're just writing, if you're writing jokes and those are your beats, it's you're not, not going to have yeah. a very good story. No. Yeah. And so I kind of took that approach of like, I, well, I always say I'm the least funny person on the podcast for sure. Like, I don't think I'm that so you have a hilarious on... podcast, but I get that. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. You're focused like, on the I'm big so picture focused. of it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But like, 
I think some of the best compliments we've had is that one time uh, an episode aired and like all of a sudden I got a message and they were like, bro, I had to pull over on the freeway because I was laughing so hard. It was just like I, I was cry laughing and I could not see. So I pulled over on the freeway so that I wouldn't get in an accident. And I was like, oh, my God, so flattering. Like, like put that like, yeah, <laughs> intravenously to my ego, please. Like that is that's the exactly. height. Exactly. Amazing. Yeah. And then a couple months later, the same person was like, bro, I was bawling at work <laughs> because that was so devastating. Like what just happened on the show? made me cry in front of people and i you know i had my headphones in and i just had to be like oh it's just something sad happened in the show you know i was like <laughs> Don't worry oh my about gosh it. like yeah and it's like which made that was the moment where i was like we got it we got borderlands you know like because borderlands too right like oh yeah there's there's all this these jokes right it's just jokes 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 but then all of a sudden bloodwing and uh you know like there's all this darkness that hits and then it'll be jokes and then dark. You're like, there's just that amazing, beautiful balance of humor and comedy. It is. And, and I, go, I go back all the time to to uh, when I'm like ranting to people about why why Jack does care about Angel is the argument I get a lot because I'm like cycle of abuse and things like that. Like he, what he doesn't see what he's doing as abuse because it wasn't how he was abused. And it's like it's so like I could I could dive into this like psyche. But it's always more interesting for your villains to give a fuck at the, about something right. and people. But the password being I love you and like all this stuff like, yes, it's manipulative. Yes, we can go into like the moral like whatever. But like characters aren't good people like characters have to be able to like do things right. Um, but I go into a lot of the time with the writing of two at that point and why I feel like Damien Clark was such a godsend for Jack because it could have just been this like, you know, here's the joke, here's the beat on the page if someone's like leaning into that. And he makes everything feel so conversational in his approach to Jack, which is why I think it works and doesn't feel like he's just calling and heckling you because he's only in the game. Like there's only about 20 minutes of audio for his actual like calling and, you know, talking the echoes, which is absurd when you think about this like 40 hour kind of game at this point um for yeah. him to have such a presence but in the writing of it i always go back that they were talking about in the original after after you kill angel it's back to rapid fire jokes and it just didn't hit because they were just like you need to see this turn from him and it, it became like okay well let's remove this let's remove this and then really at that point he doesn't joke again after you kill Angel, except the roll and milkshake bit where they had to keep it in because they were like, this is just so funny and it's so like whatever and it's work and which I love. But that's so true for Borderlands and how they really go through like even like TPS does that really well where after Moxie betrays him and I've cried on stream about that moment too many times because <laughs> I'm a little kidding. But like it, it has such a good through line in in these narratives. Tales does it really well where you have this like comfort in almost the absurdity of it and the characters take themselves really seriously and the stakes are serious but like everything else isn't serious like the game doesn't take itself seriously so when it has those gut punch moments it's so intentional and so grounded in comparison to everything else that like yeah like if you what do you mean you haven't cried in a borderlands game like you didn't even dragons keep like i just like i it's so <sighs> raw for me because those moments are so effective and why Bloodwing works so well because it's just shocking that you come into that and that's like wait we're actually killing things to know about like that's not it, it's like when Ned Stark died and you're just kind of like can they do that what? like can that is that <laughs> but he's Sean B like, like, yeah. like it doesn't it doesn't work he's like He's, he's like the, the main, one good person. Yeah, he's the main character. That's like he was he well, what? Like it makes no yeah. sense. And it's it's like that. So when Jack shows up in two, you have that, like, you don't have the same arguments. And we did for years, so it's less that, but like how I always hear the arguments of like, why didn't we do anything with my wife's vault hunter just standing there? And I'm like, because that's just not mechanically how things work, and also because there is a threat. Jack coming to your face standing there looking you in the eye blood on his face from killing roland threatening you and leaving like you would be frozen in the spot at that point and it works because it's just kind of like what the fuck do you do at that point you just saw how effortless this was and it's just he's letting you live 
And it is it is just such a real moment that I feel like people take for granted of why things like Handsome Jack work so well and why those areas. And I think those are like the best in in I mean, all games. I'm like, yes, more villains like this, but like things like tabletop and stuff like that, where you can have those unexpected. Like if someone is just sinister all the time, if someone's just funny all the time, if someone's just whatever, like if you don't have those that ability to be able to like we can laugh about this and like be crying so like crying so hard because we're laughing so hard and then 30 seconds yeah. later be sobbing <laughs> like you you start gold if you can do that because it is it it does require you to have that empathy for these characters um and when you're making them yourself in that kind of live play setting it is just so raw because they are your emotions guiding that improv they are your gut decisions and they are these other characters that truly take the wheel at times that would go against maybe what you even want to do and you have to deal with the real life consequences of that and that character sadness or what it just it's there's nothing yeah. like it to me oh yeah you were talking earlier about your girlfriend and you like oh, yeah. <laughs> fighting in real life and in the game right like yeah and having that tension so like me i'm the storyteller right i'm the bm so I, there was one time where my wife made a decision and we had like three weeks between when that would resolve and not, or, you know, like, yeah, we had three weeks between when it would resolve. And, uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. That was a tense three weeks because like I would, as the BM and, you know, I edit the podcast and I was like, I, how am I going to bring that emotion? Cause there's yeah. this very tense ending uh, of this consequence to this act, you know, this choice she made. Uh, and so she would occasionally bring it up in the car and I would kind of like stick a Obstigate knife in it, it a little <laughs> bit and twist it. Yeah. Like, and be like, I don't know. Like they're, I don't know how, how we're going to get out of people this. People are going to survive this or, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, like people probably died, you know, just really like sticking that in there and being you wouldn't like, be a real so a real gm if you didn't do that though like that's like the part of the part I, of the yeah. stick you gotta you gotta it's like being an abusive partner too or something i don't know <laughs> you know i'm just like i'm keeping uh, no, my my I wife am that in this, person. Like, tense. i am that person i'm not i'm not the i'm not the dm right now and it's literally like i because our dm like we have right. We have a we have a little server of all of us on that's just like us like ranting. She was like, "No, you don't understand. I want all your thoughts all the time." We're like, "You don't understand. It will be a hundred percent of the time. It will be twenty four seven. And I apologize, but it's what it is. And so we'll be saying something. And like literally, even yesterday, I was like, um, "Uh." she was like oh is this character invited to this ball thing that i that i know is going to be like a red wedding kind of situation. i just know i know it's going to oh, be bad no. and um but my character can't not go. like there's literally there's just like i i'm i'm the problem it is i am the problem but my girlfriend's like oh is this other character invited and she's like uh she would be invited yeah and she goes i don't like how you phrase that and then they get in a back and forth where it was just like well we'll see what happens friday I'm like there's nothing that we can do enough that it's going to accelerate to that time because we're about to go to the fate wild where everything's going to pause and so what and she's like well we'll see i'm like what do you mean we'll see like what could possibly happen like we then we just went off the rails of just like oh my god i'm gonna get your wife killed in this game that you don't even remember at this point. Like, I, like it is spiral, oh, but our DM knows we're sitting here having these and then it will occasionally like, be silent and then just respond to one thing we said earlier. And it's like, I mean, you can always ask or do you want to insight check him? And I'm like, I didn't think that was something I needed to insight check. What are you? I don't No, <laughs> No, I don't. Maybe I don't want to. Like, it just, it gets to you. But then I'm the same where like we're sitting here and I'm like, babe, you know, I love you. I'm sorry. She's just like having hot girl summer. Like just totally ignore her. Like she's a bitch. <laughs> don't worry about it. Cause like she made the softest bean in the world. And I absolutely did not. Oh. And that wasn't intentional. And it's not her normal type of character she makes at all and it wasn't even it wasn't intentional and i don't know how literally it's like an actual cinnamon roll good person like champion of saloon energy and me sitting here going like but like what if like wizards just like killed everyone else <laughs> because like that's like, what it is. and that's a exaggeration of where it is but it's basically where it is and um so we'll be talking and i'll be like babe no it's totally fine like it's like this or like you know like you know how like tyrene like does it like it's fine she goes no tyrene knows she's bad tyrene knows what she's doing this is it. You're saying that she doesn't know what she's doing. Tyreen is better because Tyreen knows what she, and we will get like personal. And so I'll like diffuse it. I'll do whatever and then sit there. And then I just can't help it where it'll just be something I'm like, I mean, I mean, 
we'll, we'll see we'll see if she tells him about the sending and she's like are you fucking kidding carly woods carly you look at me right now like i get full named and just the rage and i, I can't help it just this little like it's so good though it's so good and i can't do that yeah. in games like people can just google what happens in a video game and i'm like no don't <laughs> like it's yeah yeah exactly like you gotta you just gotta let it hang you gotta yeah get there it, and uh, it like, wouldn't be a hyperfixation if it didn't yeah exactly i think about certain moments in games are there moments in games Ooh, yeah let's do that what, what are some of your favorite moments in games that just like stick with you haunting um, or good or wheatley's betrayal in portal 2 um I think I have on video of me reacting to gaming trust issues. Um, same with Bioshock. Um, Bioshock One's turn is really that one sticks with me. Most betrayals, <laughs> any anything that's the equivalent of the yes. frozen oh Anna, if there was someone out there who loved you kind of feeling, probably stuck with me in a game. <laughs> um, but no, like there's so many beats in uh to go back to like cyberpunk. There are so many little beats that shouldn't really stick with me because they feel more throwaway, and they're just those moments that I like my lore side of my brain sits there and wants to just devour forever where I'm like, what did this mean? It's like one throwaway line from, um, from Johnny or, you know, something you're talking, Vic, Vic lives rent free in my, my mind, honestly, like just like the scene where in cyberpunk, where Vic has to like save you after like Johnny brings you to him. And it's this moment where it's pretty much the turn of the, the last act where you're just like, you need to like go make decisions and do stuff. But Vic is like, he feels angry at you and it's just like you just you need to go and he knows you're going to your death but it's like that that interaction there especially playing as both male and female v because of, they acted so differently but like male v has a very like Vic, like what like no i'm like dying you're like what do i what do i do and he's like really uncomfortable by this energy but then female v is heartbreaking who's a voice of gauge but like heartbreaking where i'm yeah. sitting here being like i don't i don't know how to process it because she's just like Vic, like look at me like I, am i like she's just it, it just stays with me where i'm like we barely see this man in this game and like comparatively you don't even have to go back to him after like the first introduction until this point and there's so much depth to that that it it haunts me and i will like be sitting here like you know washing dishes and then i just like picture picture that face where he like can't look at you and it guts me it absolutely guts me it's so good um there's plenty in like the last of us resident evil i could go on forever what about you Uh, bioshock was is always the first one oh yeah my mind right like so good it's so good it's such a solid one Uh, like not not even not even there is no atlas kid like kind of energy just the andrew ryan scene like walking in seeing the wall and like listening to those like i keep wanting to say echoes but (laughs) listening listening to the audios and then going in there but literally the whole scene with Andrew Ryan, because for me, then it's the second time you play after that, where you go through and it's at the beginning of the game where he's like, would you kindly lower your wrench and you do it and you don't realize that you're not doing like it, it's, yeah. oh, it's so good. Like, ah. <laughs> it's so good. It's so well done. It's absurd. And like you go through the yeah. game, just suddenly realizing all the things you didn't pick up on that are just so expertly done that. Oh, my God. It just it hits every fucking time every fucking time. yeah absolute chills yeah but, ugh, mind-blowing the other ones like i the earliest one i can think of is final fantasy 7 playing that and yeah. being a kid and being like what the hell like oh, no yeah no yeah. that can't happen you know like the betray- i was yeah. away i feel yeah, like it, yeah oh, mind-blowing i'm trying to think of like the earlier games like that like there were plenty in um like, I don't know, I played a lot of, like, action-adventure games growing up, and so, like, the early Tomb Raider stuff, but I don't think I emotionally felt, like, devastated by a game until I got back into them. Like, I was getting into, like, horror games stuff in Atlas, and played a lot of one-shots or watched a lot of stuff, and, like, clearly emotionally, they'll stick with you, and you have, like, little moments where you're just like, oh, that was for you, that's a cool design, but it was things, like, Until Dawn, The Last of Us, kind of, you know, going back and playing the Resident Evil remakes, um well borderlands obviously but these these just longer form games than i ever you know let myself really play because i was like simpsons and run gta you know red dead redemption 2 obviously like got to like of course of course of course you're gonna cry but um (laughs) it was it was the first time i played last of us 
where I just remember the scene with um like that's everything got to me, but it was the the famous fight scene that everyone I've ever cared for has either died or left me. Everyone fucking except for you. So don't tell me I'll be safer alone because the truth is I'd just be more scared. And I know like I have daddy issues, but like that scene, I remember having to pause and just like because the way even the way they did the show is different. Um uh like plot wise, which I enjoyed because it doesn't you need that break because in the game tommy comes running in and is like hey we got company and you have to immediately like fight and like get over that tension but like go through it um and it's hard to do that and like you're sitting there watching something like how do you get over this moment and so i really like how they handled in the show but it was it was still like the entire show i sobbed through the entire adaptation oh, of, that, of that like damn. the entire i the first episode like my girlfriend's at work and i remember just sitting photo of her after she's like how was it and i'm just like sobbing on the couch and i'm just like oh, it was great <laughs> it, was, it, was, so it was perfect it was pitch perfect it was great don't worry about it um and that was me the entire time um my god like the henry episodes and stuff like that like it just it was so true to that emotional vein in it and i get people are who are like like k6 and i argue about it where he's just like if i want to watch a movie i'd like watch a movie i'm like i feel like it's not actually that much cut scene and games like that though for me like it, i feel like most of what i'm getting is like when they're walking around so it never feels like that to me um yeah and like i get where people like have the friends for like go 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 but like it's never felt like i have to sit and watch something like i love when games have cut scenes i love when i can get a little bit more of that lore that you couldn't get in that same way especially when there are these two minute clips that suddenly make me like cry on the couch and have to stop the game because i'm like oh the way he said that just hurts so deeply to my core that i don't know because then it does hit have the payoff later when you're running in game and you hear like I've got you baby girl kind of thing and you're like oh my god <laughs> like what and it just you can't isolate moments like that because it's so much part of the the whole of the game and why things like life is strange or you know even go back to tales from the borderlands like any of these like really well done choice based games where you are in control here but there is a point where something becomes binary and like very this like you you arrive at this choice and it does hit differently depending on how you've played that. And um, mm-hmm. it's the it's the beginning of episode five for Tales where they're destroying Helios that always just sticks with me. And Jack begging Reese after threatening him after all that stuff. But like just said, like, no, there's nothing there. Like, you, it's not what they say. Like, like, please don't do this after everything just hits so good. And just, uh, ah. Yeah. It's, you wouldn't have that if you didn't have the whole game making you crazy the whole time or if you didn't have the option to trust him or what you're saying and like have these funny little beats but it works because no matter if you like do tell on him at the beginning no matter if you are on his side like it, it does have that emotion but it ugh, it's just so well done like they're so well done i love games games are great yeah. <laughs> games are great and the stories they tell like that's the thing right like people always people will complain about how Oh, the cutscenes are too long, or oh, there's too many cutscenes, and but then they also are complaining about the story, and it's just yeah. like, pick pick a lane, buddy. No, You're literally, like, like that's me. My thing with Borderlands Three, especially, I'm like so much of it is told in echoes too, and then you can skip yes. these cutscenes now. But we're so bitter about the beginning where you couldn't. But like me as a writer, I've been di- I'm known for my dialogue. I'm hired for my dialogue, so it hurts me a little bit when people are like, I delete the dialogue from games. I'm like, okay, whatever you want, that's fine. But um. <laughs> it's cool but then I don't agree. bitch yeah. about the story like you need to experience a story and it's you're not slowing yourself down by watching a 40 second cutscene. and i get you know the flow like three i will criticize like for their pacing like i feel like that's my biggest like thing with it where it just especially eden yes. six section like that's where i feel like i don't think it's story and i feel like people don't know what they're actually like critiquing when they and i see this in movies all the time where they're like really they the editing is a problem and people are like oh it's the director or, or oh it's this i'm like it's probably a lot of things but at this point but the things you're citing when you're talking about it are editing decisions or editing things or you know it, it's very easy to go like this actor sucks this writer sucks what are people doing or like why do we keep being marvel movies by our writers not doing anything better i'm like writers are doing everything better that's not <laughs> that's not the problem out here and so i get very like Okay, well, that's not the problem <laughs> when people talk about it. But with video games, it's like when we talk about adaptations, especially and taking it into like the even the TTRPG adaptations or the TV show or the movies 
whatever type we're looking at, people are still mad if it's not a carbon copy of the story. And I don't understand that because I'm like, if you don't want to watch the story you're experiencing in that way when you're talking about this game, but then you want that for your adaptation, you this this game still exists for you where you can like have that. And adaptations, like what works in the game isn't going to work in film all the time. Like it's sometimes oh, going to yeah. be better to change it. Like that doesn't translate and I had to learn that lesson really young when like my favorite books were being adapted to movies. And then I remember just like being like, what the, f- why is this so different? And then it's like, okay, well then why start writing scripts? I'm like, oh, because that wouldn't work in a movie at all. Like that's not an emotional moment. That's not a payoff. It's not anything. And so it was hard to unravel that, especially seeing some of my favorites, like not get an adaptation. I felt like they deserved. But when we talk about like the Borderlands movie, I'm like, one didn't have plot really like it It just didn't one didn't really have a plot and i love yeah. it i love it what was in, what's kind of interesting though yeah it doesn't have much of a plot but i was replaying it the other day and it's like i don't know why but like so much of the actual plot there is a little bit more than i realized and a lot of it is just like written in the mission yeah just, like when you yeah. go to pick up a mission there's like all there's like paragraphs sometimes of things. And when you turn in mission accomplished, right, then there's the written stuff that they don't yeah. say out loud. You have to actually read it. And I'm like, well, fuck that. I can't do that all day. You know, like, exactly. Well, then I would just read I a book. Want to, but yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. Then I would just it's read hard. A book. But like, they're actually, yeah. there's some surprising stuff in there. But there's yeah, some so world overall, building in there. Like, I feel like one yeah. has a lot of world yeah. building. I feel like they just forgot they needed a villain and then like the fact that we don't know anything about steel and she was in there like things like that i'm like it's and i don't fault them for that it it gave us two it gave us cbs it let it like come into what it was going to be but like there's and you don't know in hindsight it's like what they talk about when they were first filming the first star wars where everyone there knew it was going to be big except george where george lucas just sitting there going like well i'm making a movie kind of thing but none of them knew like still like how like like you can't conceptualize what then star wars would become at that point because you're just like going around with no sound effects you have the behind the scenes clip of harrison Ford going bam 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 as he's shooting a gun (laughs) because they have no idea what the fuck they're doing and so it's like you you don't know you're gonna make a game that's gonna you know become this thing you don't know when you're introducing handsome jack he's gonna become handsome jack and go "Mm, maybe we shouldn't have killed him so soon because this then became a thing we had to like whatever so hindsight great whatever but the story, when we talk about when people come want to argue the movie with me and I'm like, it's in a different universe, which is good because why wouldn't why wouldn't it be at that point? But I just like I don't under, I don't understand the argument otherwise. But um, <laughs> it's on me and my little autistic brain. But um, there is <laughs> there's so much that you get from games when you're playing them for like a 20 hour campaign, a 40 hour campaign, whatever it is that you can't boil down into an hour and a half movie. You can't do it. And you're not going to get that same emotional response or journey or anything. And even if you're like, oh, but you're cutting out like the the fighting, but you're going to be mad if there aren't the action scenes and you're cutting out. The, like, it's just at what yeah. point, like, do you separate it? Like, I don't think it's an either or thing. Like, I saw I saw some takes yesterday with the announcement of the Wonderlands comic where people are like, yeah. oh, well, like, why couldn't they have just like scrapped this and done like a better DLC? And I'm like, those aren't the same thing. Those aren't the fuck. Those what aren't the, fuck? the same teams. Those aren't the same budget. Those aren't the same anything. And I get part of it comes from like a company that big and probably just knowing that they have money to do so, but like not knowing how much you have to go around for that. Like the bigger the company, the harder it is to make a thing. Like <laughs> that's just where it's at. Yes. And yeah. um, so I keep seeing these takes. I'm like, and then there's we can also both. like 2K. Oh. exactly no go ahead yeah like TV yeah, like, just Gear- like yeah gearbox doesn't own straight out own borderlands like yeah they have to go through 2k 2k has to approve things gearbox has to approve things so like even for bunkers and badasses right it's like you have nirvana games making it gearbox people might be helping here and there but there's also like well will this still work uh will that work you know and then they have to pass it up to 2K and 2K has to be like, yeah, OK, this. Yeah, you can do this. You know, and like, then some there's, licensing there's things are insane. Stuff. Yeah. Like, that's a thing. Yeah. Like, it's just like if if a company's going to hear we sometimes then they're doing everything and then they come for approval. Sometimes they're working very closely with a team. You don't know. Yeah. A, a graphic novel is not taking away something you would have gone from the game. If any, it is good to have more content yeah. for the stuff because it's going to bring more spotlight on the games, therefore giving you more stuff in the game. Like it just, it's never a bad thing. And so I feel yeah. like when I, when I'm having the same arguments with people about the movie where I'm like, 
this doesn't take away our ability to have a loyal, you know, animated adaptation of Borderlands in like a TV series format. It doesn't take away the ability to have these other arcs and novels or these other games. But like the more content, it's it's not disrupting the shooters. Like you're gonna be you're gonna be you're gonna be good. It's gonna be fine. Like Borderlands is fun. It's not I love it with my whole heart. It's not good. <laughs> like I think it's great. I love it. I love it so much. But this isn't gonna be an Oscar bait kind like Borderlands is candy. It's the fun. It's your yeah. it's a popcorn movie. We're not wanting to set out to be like we're making, you know, the Hurt Locker right now. That's just not that wouldn't be the vibe. And so I don't know what people want when they talk about I'm like, this is Borderlands where we literally run around and make the dumbest fucking jokes and have guns with legs and a trailer that make people lose their goddamn mind and, you know, whatever else. And it's just like, oh, my God, the people lost their mind. And I'm like, this is this is good. And the the play style of those games, I feel like. It's why Tales worked so well for me because it truly felt like a love letter to the world and expanded on the world in such a real way where it felt grounded and it was still feeling like Borderlands. And I want to see more stuff like that. And I think the movies and adaptations and graphic novels and stuff like that is a perfect way to do that. And Bunker and Badass is the more the more models they get, the more love it gets, the more you know mainstream it gets. It's just better for everyone. And I think that that's a yeah. great mission to have. <laughs> I agree. I I do though. I it breaks my heart a little bit that they made it a movie that they announced it as a movie. The you know Borderlands years and years ago, right? Like this yeah. has been in development for like oh yeah, w- way before the pandemic even. Yeah. Uh, and I just like for years I've always said it that like TV shows like yeah you have we invest so many hours immersing ourselves into these worlds and video games. And that's why things hit so hard is because like one, you're controlling it, right? Like you're there, you're in that world. Yeah. But in a movie, you only have two hours about, you know, like yeah, to really get into it, get to know characters, get to know world, get to know lore, get to, you know, like there's all this stuff, but like, it's just, I wish that they did it as a TV series. Yeah. And it's, I wonder partially, you know, like, after last of us because obviously fucking yeah. mad you know like that yeah. is ins- they just blew that out of the water yeah well and craig mazin even was like the original writer for the borderlands movie so he removed his name but <laughs> i <laughs> we'll have see such, what that means i i worry I, the thing the the thing with craig is that when on the hollywood side of it like before it had landed officially with eli and stuff like that i remember on the screenwriter side of stuff out here, that was the talk of like, that was the script that people were trying to land. Like it was like one of the best adaptation of script. Like people were excited. And I was like, Oh my God, is Borderlands going to get like a sick ass movie. Cause like this was truly from like in- industry professionals that would talk about be like, Oh my God. Yeah. Like so excited where that's going to end up. And so for now I'm to be like, Nope, that's not me. That's I'm not that. M- nope. Not, not my script anymore. I'm like, Okay, well, that came pretty late in the process, so that makes me a little... Okay, however, I do think... I mean, Randy, Randy, when he moved to the, like, film and TV side and the multimedia side of Gearbox and stuff like that, like, I think we're going to see more. I don't think this is, you know, the, yeah. the only swing we have. And movies are, you know... I this is this is definitely self indulgent to me. Movies are fun. They're fun to make. There are a lot of fucking it's hard to make a movie. It's hard to make a TV show. But like I could see gratuitously wanting to be like, yeah, no, I want this thing to be a movie. You know, you want that big budget experience. You want the popcorn bucket. You want the all that because there's so many TV shows now, but then it's still so hard to get me like whatever. Like it's it's this it's this epic thing that I think would have better legs as a movie franchise for the mainstream appeal of it that then I do think if that's successful, we very well could see like a loyal type of animated series, a loyal type of any type of TV series that would allow you to get into that. I do think it probably should be animated with how people are bitching about everything. I think they're crazy. Like when I see people talk about prop design, I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I think it looks, I think it looks great. Um, Especially when they then bring up cosplayers, because I see so many people with these prop time sex cosplayers yeah. doing it better. I'm like, all the cosplayers are telling you, no, you're wrong. <laughs> like, all the cosplayers are like, he's sitting here going, like, okay, here's some consider. Like, no, it's it's the Borderlands cosplay community is very it's very small. It's a very um, 
we all we all know of each other at a point you know what i mean and so it's yeah. just oh uh, there are just some takes to see where i'm like i don't know a single single person here in this little group i'm sure they're out there but who would be like yeah you're right i could that that's better because even like jocelyn cupcake and i were talking about like the the costumes people don't realize like these don't work practically and to make them like super like accurate to what you're saying and things like that like that doesn't make it feel the most accurate and also you will just logistically like they don't actually work in real life and then that's why we have to do it like it's not it doesn't translate to screen and also unless it's like very painted on this phone it doesn't look how you want it to look and it's like we as as a slut for accuracy it's impossible and so there's just um yeah, yeah. and so there's so much where i'm like i'm i i think it's gonna be a fun time and i i really think the success of it is going to just lead to things like getting getting an anime or whatever people want from it you know like i i don't think this is the last or because i also don't think randy would be like yep well we tried it that's over like i think he wants to see it as media so he's gonna push it as media because that's every hint he's been dropping like it feels very much like the the gift the my single my single is dropping is dropping kind of kind of vibe where it's like (laughs) hey we're expanding things and people are like well what are they doing i'm like every interview he has he's like this is the goal Look at this expansion. Look at how many different ways and different types of media the story can live. People are like, well, yeah, we have a movie, though, and they're old in the cast. And I don't I don't know what to do about that. And I'm like, oh, my God, I hate this. <laughs> like it just every time I I super hate that they're old. I hate on it. it like I- so much. <laughs> it enrages me. <laughs> Me too. My brother-in-law brought that up. And I was just like, what? like, especially with Tannis, I'm just like, well, OK, OK. She's a researcher. She's like, what she does was it matter to their Pandora story for so long? Like, yeah, like, what? They're polygons in 2009. I'm sorry. <sighs> Everyone looked fucking some vague description yes. of 20 or 30 in these games to Borderlands 3. Like, everyone looked around probably the same age in these games because that's how graphics fucking were yeah. at the time. Also, the only the only character in this cast whose age is relevant to their actual storyline is fucking tina and then i see stuff like well ashley birch that played tina i'm like where does that where does that swing happen because this woman is double the age of what tina would be in this moment if you're if you're like this is what it is i'm like you i get one you want familiar but i don't think there's a single actor out there that would have been like oh this is lilith for people that would have been right and so to bring up the age about everything i'm like none of it is relevant to their characters at all like at all that is not yeah exactly that is not part of their story I just, oh my god, yeah. it boggles my mind. But no, it's I fun. agree. It's just, Boomer lands. I still get DMs from people when they find my like tweet that was like, "Oh my god, I'm so excited for the movie." Where people are just like, "Okay, she'll Boomer lands," and I'm like, "What the fuck do you want me to do with that?" What? Oh, you got me. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't post on YouTube very often, and I posted my like kind of breakdown of yeah the like I did it on TikTok or something. Yeah, yeah, and your breakdown of the trailer, yeah. Hard, yeah, like by far the most comments on anything I've ever posted. And it's just like all of them, 100% of them are like negative comments. Like they're killing the franchise. They're killing, you know, like, oh, so old. Oh, Kevin Hart. Uh, Roland's more serious than that. And it's like, well, no, no, Roland no, he wasn't. Not. Roland, <sighs> Roland in one is fucking he is like, this is like Christmas. Like he is yeah, literally it's like Christmas. The the fucking criticism when I go back through boards, when I try to find any morsel of lore, anything. And people were so mad at how serious Roland was in two was like the big takeaway where people were like, why did they make him so like stoic in this? Because he was like fun and silly and like it was funny and one and now people are reimagining also i'm sorry no actor in hollywood is the height you think they are i'm sorry that kevin hart was a comedy actor for like oh, so yeah. long at this point but i'm like this literally does not matter to his character at fucking all like at all yeah um well and also he plays the straight character in most comedies yeah, like he does he's somebody else is usually doing like there's Will Ferrell being Will Ferrell, person, and then he's right? the he's the Michael Bluth of the what the fuck is going on right now? Like he's yeah, he's exactly. the straight man, and it just it it it'll work. Like I had no problems with him in the trailer at all. Like he worked his ass off yeah. to like you know go train for this, and like that's everything. All the stunt yeah, coordinators yeah. everyone has talked about, yeah, literally, and all the stunt like no, he like seriously like brought it. Everyone on the set seems so excited to be making the Borderlands movie. To be, they were in Borderlands, like they wanted to do it well and i'm like you're you're writing him off when i doubt you've even seen a kevin hart movie at this point you're just like making it like i'm just like it doesn't 
what does it matter? Because Roland literally, like, he he was funny. He was funny and fun. And the trauma that these characters go through between Borderlands 1 and Borderlands 2, which is why I sit here and scream about the fall of New Haven every day of my life, is just insane. <laughs> and so I'm just like... It makes sense for characters to have a turn at that point, but he literally breaks up with Lil to be like, I need to focus on Jack, makes a bunch of posters, tries to recruit, puts him up alone. Like, little graphic design is my passion, Roland man, sitting there going like, okay, my home was destroyed. I brought people out of here and then got them almost killed. And then Wilhelm almost killed us without breaking a sweat. And then Lil, we had a fake her death and she's over here. And now my entire life, I know, because two, no matter how people want to spin it, two is a story of Jack and Roland. Two is the point where Jack knows at some point he's going to face off with Roland, and Roland knows at some point he's going to face off with Jack. That is the entire narrative, which is why it's so effective when he shows up in the core just to fucking kill him, because he's no longer playing with him. He's no longer building up this. It wasn't about Lilith. That wasn't it. Lilith made it about herself at that point. Even in TPS, it wasn't really about Lilith, because people love to go back and be, well, she punched him in the face and made the scar. So, like, that's clearly why he's after him, too. He doesn't give a fuck. He just doesn't want a fucking siren out there faking her and knowing all this shit. He's just trying to, hey, where is she? That's it. Everything in that narrative is about Jack and Roland. That's it. And so I'm like, you have all this build up for this character to be like, this is my purpose. This is what I'm doing. This is what I've sacrificed to get here. And then he gets taken away without Jack even flinching. And that is so fucking good. But you have to give him a chance to get there because this man in the first game is just he's a fun vault hunter. He has to fucking get there. He was literally like stuck. Yeah. Like, oh, my God. I just like the lands, everything it did. Like, even when you go look at his wiki, it's like, was he dishonorably discharged because they don't have honorable yeah. discharges? And then this, and I don't know, man. Like, it's just. There there's is no so such much. thing as an honorable discharge there exactly <laughs> um, and i'm just like yeah. there's just so much there's so much and i think people put themselves well, in box yeah even in two he had his moments where like you know he's lilith is pining over him and then all of a sudden she turns it right and then yeah. he's like the bumbling fool and it's like oh that's cute you know like but he yeah he's not that you know like he comes off very comedic there right like it, it's does. that straight oh, man he's playing that straight man and then it's funnier when he stumbles into. oh it's like his like handsome jack is gonna kill us all if we don't it's like that's his way of saying hi oh yeah right. hi. hi anyway <laughs> like he just he's just so awkward and it's so good i love yes, him I, exactly. and that's the thing, I love roland i'm like i'm number one give me more roland and jack lore give me this and like i ran about all the time i'm like i want to find every three line because they literally both are just like obsessed with the concept of stopping each other when they didn't need to be like this was like they put themselves in this path so like okay what about what about everything with um the destroyer and then how we get to this point and i i just want to dissect the fuck out of it and so when people come in and want to argue about roland I'm like i promise you i've thought more about roland than you have like this is fine <laughs> like it's just <laughs> i promise you <laughs> this is yeah uh, he is he is my baby boy and um it's oh god i'm just i'm excited for whatever we whatever new things we get out of this very arguably niche you know fandom like it's you know i think one of the only one of the only big games that are like so profitable without like battle pass kind of stuff like it, it's for yeah. how how they do it it's shocking that the fandom is both this big and this small at the same time because we are really lucky i think with the type of content we get three has so many things going on at any given time all the event modes we have you know the black markets like there's tons of stuff there and i i really just hope that you know we get we get more like give us more give us more modules give us more graphic novels give us the tv show because so much of it does lend itself and the more we have the more people are exposed to it and then the more people that come in and then that's better because then we get more content and then we get more game and it's just like it's just a good thing to have more of it out there and um yeah i'm shocked that that's a more unpopular opinion right now but it's um i don't know i just even things like new tales that i feel like weren't what i wanted it to be i don't think it takes away anything from my enjoyment of the original tales or any of the other games or anything like that and i also think like going on record i think people are fucking insane if they think this crystal is suddenly going to be the be all and all so like Oh, well, they know we're mad about Maya and we're taking it. Like, no, the Crystal's not going to be fucking relevant. It was a it was a plot device in one game. Like, and if it's relevant for something, it's going to be like a tool they use for a new type of weapon thing. This is not going to be part of the fucking plot. Like, don't. Yeah. It's not going to well, be a thing. Okay. How are you going to bring... They're shooting... Uh, who was it? Uh, 
shit, what's his name? Who are they killing with the green crystal and bringing back or red, oh. green, right? Like a oh, they're um uh the Octavio. They're um, Octavio. There yeah. we go. Yeah, they're like killing him, bring him back. Yeah, Let's kill him, bring him back. They're shooting a fucking body. They're not gonna go and find every dust. Like how are they? Yeah. How would they bring Maya back with that? Well, it's they like, wouldn't. They can't. It's like the like, end with them even with that. Undo this laser thing, whatever. But also, like, then what part of time does that? Does it for all of time? We're gonna like, you know undo every death for whatever on this it just none of none of it none of it makes yeah. sense like in a it's not even like a superman or like reverse the world kind of like moment like it was a plot in this one game for this one bit and if anything i think it could be like a hint to be like because i think lilith is off on you know the actual siren home world kind of thing it's trapped in this other dimension where it like vaults her a different dimension and i think that's probably like you know the search for spot kind of vibe where she's out doing this thing right yeah and um i think it could be a hint key something but i don't think it's gonna be like we pick up right after bl3 and then we have this and then oh we have Maya. like i don't know what people expect i don't know what i expect but i really don't i will i will happily eat my words if this crystal ends up being a you know undo what fans are pissed about plot device but i don't see any universe where that's gonna happen <laughs> so i don't know yeah, why we're same. arguing about it <laughs> every time when i would there's uh things i've learned about from like uh running a show and uh doing this is so funny enough uh literally the week before uh new tales came out i had one of the concepts i had was like having different things that sirens could use uh different gems right different stones nice. so there's iridium right and then i have like a red stone i have a green stone and the green stone brings people back to life and i was like <laughs> holy shit you know like i and i had recorded that episode the week before that came out so it came out like a while after though yeah um but i was just like i swear like i swear we recorded this and then the next week i was playing it and it was like what what like i made that up but yeah but we ended up actually retconning bringing somebody back to life because i was like everybody afterwards was like no we can't like that that cheapens yeah that cheapens the death that cheapens it the goes moment, back to the that stakes you everything. need yeah you need yeah if if it feels like everything's just like an x-men comic where you can just bring people back <laughs> i love x-men my whole heart and soul but it's just one of those things where it's yeah. like like oh charles side again okay that's i'll catch up with you <laughs> like it's, it's no big deal at that point but like like the death of wolverine comic got me but that's because of kurt's emotional reaction to it not because i was like oh my god they killed wolverine and so i feel right. like those moments yeah like they're not gonna they're not gonna put you through that in the game to be like here you go it's okay like, people got mad so maya's back there you go like maya didn't have a character i i love her she wasn't it's not it, it, she's yeah. not needed to come back she accelerated that plot by dying more than she could have by staying alive like that is a hundred percent. There's also the fact that we've got uh, three main games that have sirens that we are playing as. Mm -hmm. There are six known sirens in the universe. Some of these sirens are NPCs, and uh, eventually, do you, are we just not going to be playing as sirens anymore? Because we play as new vault hunters every time. Yep. So people gotta die, or there's all of a sudden they have to break that rule yeah. and. You know yeah. that people would be upset if if you go into a game and they're like, well, why isn't there a siren in this game? Oh, why they'd can't be so I mad. Play as a they'd, siren. They'd yeah. be so fucking mad. And it's like, it, it, it again, I, I get it because it is like, it is one of my favorite classes. Like, I, I love it. I, I'm a siren man. Yeah. I get it. Um, except I'm one, weirdly. Um, but I 100% um, think that. You know, even with like the they can't know about the seventh with Lilith, if we're because I, I, I do think that she's probably like fucking up the number of sirens by being trapped in this thing if it's like different dimension whatever like or with this power is going around like there's gonna be something something that's trapped and therefore siren blah 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 lore insert insert yeah. explanation here whatever we still need a fucking we need ava to have powers we need it to grow up and we need we need that like you're not gonna kill the 13 year old like you're just or 15 year old whatever she would like it's just not not gonna happen and also not the point. She was set up immediately. It was like seeing the shot of Han Solo on the bridge. You know what's fucking happening when you're walking out there. The moment she's like, oh, I have an apprentice. You know what's fucking happening. And it's just yeah. like, it's... The payoff needs to be there. And sometimes it takes over the course of a few games. But people were mad they killed Scooter and Tails because they didn't play Tails. And they're like, what do you mean I have to go play another game for this to happen? And But now they're like, 
mad that they would kill him. Like he had a really emotional death. He had like a very good, good send off. It was a very well done death. And it was. I, I'm not mad about it. I'm not mad about it. Also, Scooter was a safe character to kill off. Like it just didn't. He had more <laughs> more benefit by being killed off than not. Yeah, yeah. And Ellie being now the main, you know, mechanic has yeah. been great. That's yeah. I I love Ellie. I have sort of a maybe unpopular opinion, and I was I want to bring it up with you. Oh my god, please do. G- gotta yeah. Uh, uh, but like. So many people get upset when they talk when I talk about like the vault hunters are not heroes. Oh no, they're bad like, people. They're mercenaries. They're bad. Yeah, exactly. And some people are just like, no, 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 we're the good guys. And it's like, you're not just because you happen to be being paid to do maybe what's the good the good thing, but even still you you're happen like, to probably be on not. the good side, but you're not you kill bandits for fun and run around. Like I'm just like you literally they took yeah. they took sanctuary by kicking fucking homeless people out of their home and like we're like this is ours now. Like I just like I nothing about we're we're the protagonist. That doesn't mean we're the good guy. Which is why I really like yeah. in in TPS when I'm like whatever like no we're still the protagonist. We're just not the good guys in those things. But our villains at that point are you know by the end Moxie Lilith Roland at that point because we're not like we're going to go fight a vault monster, we're going to go fight the sentinel, but narratively we know what side we're on and there's just like um yeah, it just sorry, we're yeah. came in. I no, I argue this all the time oh. where I'm just like it it 100% like we're just because we're playing someone doesn't mean we're right, doesn't mean we're good people, which is why you can't have the argument, okay, well Jack was right, but also like it, 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 wrong. But like no one yeah. in this world morally can have our real world morals apply because it's just so not not what it is like we we don't live in that world yeah and when we try to apply it i'm like none of these people none of these people like we are literally you stand around in a menu for too long and i was like oh my god i want to kill things why i came to this planet to like do shit and you're making me (laughs) sit here nisha is just absolutely awful person and i would argue some of them are worse than others um tps feels very much like i hired a bunch of bad people on craigslist to come do some work and it's lovely and i love it but you know it's you know, you can have a soft spot for Gage, but like it's it's you can make the argument that everyone is doing bad things and everyone is on the wrong side. And I could see them pulling a narrative at some point where it turns out we were on the wrong side this whole time. Because yeah, that would that's fit. Uh, uh, I think that the biggest thing that and one of the reasons Jack has to stay dead, right? Like, yeah, you can't yeah, bring him back. You can't. Is that in the end, like him harnessing, you know, like the Guardian is would have been would have made our job so much easier in the end. You know, like Literally, whenever yeah. the war comes or whatever happens, right? It's just like, geez, I sure wish we had a giant fucking vault monster to handle this, you know, like. Well, especially because when you look at TPS and going like the whole thing that like, Zarpadon was trying to prevent what was happening with what the Calypsos did, using Elpis as his key and like doing whatever, yeah, right? Like yeah. that's what she was preventing. Zarpadon, when Jack kills her, is trying to warn Jack. She's like, she's seen what's in this vault, which is why he's like, oh, it's open, cool, whatever. But she's like, you don't understand, like, if you do this and he kills her before she can sit, she can say what she's warning him, which is probably you're going to die if you do this. Like, this is this is what I see. Like, they're going to use this as a key. But Zarpadon literally has a moment where she's arguing Jack where she's talking about, you know, killing Elvis. And he's just like, there are there are like people living there, innocent people who live there and she's like yes there are and he's like okay this bitch is crazy we gotta like take care of this like jack believes he's the hero and that power corruption arc is so good because of that but when you look at everyone else in that narrative like it it would totally make sense at a point to be like hey the vault hunters were wrong because they were fucking vault they're treasure hunters we're going around fucking raiding things doing this we're mercenaries like there's just no other way around it like at some point that narrative could easily be flipped to be like yeah this would have been a lot easier if we had the eye of helios if we had this if you know if pandora was a run over at this point if we did have a you know any type of system here like there are just so many things that like they're gonna be, every threat has to be bigger than the last and i do think the clips that hit that mark whether people like them or not like that is a bigger threat than what jack could have done at that point because the powers they had this next villain has to be like that too, where it looks you look back at Jack and go, "Oh fuck, we had no idea." The morally great Same. part of Borderlands is part of what makes it so immersive. I feel like and lets you have so many different stories in it because it is it's more than being right or wrong. It's not about being on the right side. It's like you know 
we want to be our heroes, our vault hunters follow that. But at some point, when you get pulled in the narrative, like they all have to make choices at a point. Yeah. Like, I mean, a Borderlands 2, essentially, right? We're hired by the Handsome Jack. And then the Handsome Jack tries to kill us because he doesn't yeah. want us going for the vault and fucking up his plans. So yeah. then at that point, our entire, like, our story is just getting revenge on. Oh, yeah. We, we are a plot device at that point. Yeah. It's just us yeah, going, like, like, we ended up here and we're like, okay, I guess I'm following these people now. And yeah, it's now, yeah. this isn't my home, but it's now my job to take down Jack. You're right. I'm going to go do that. Like, it's, it, yeah. It's what it is. And it's very, it's convenient, but it's like, it wasn't our purpose in that. And so, whether or not you believe that, that, revenge that that taste for rage is that alive in your vault hunter at that point or if it's just convenient that we're following the raiders because we needed a yeah NP, like npcs to follow against jack well, i like, don't yeah yeah if we if he didn't try and kill us we would have been working for him yeah right like we were literally on a train to work for him yeah and then he oh, but God, it's I do one of my yeah, favorite like, art is in that book where it's like him like on the train at the start and it's like him smoking a cigarette and it's back. It's my favorite art in the book. I fucking love it so much. I fucking love that it. That is so wonderful. Much. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. It does things I, I uh, does things to my emotions. I love it. <sighs> I feel like one of the things so when reading going back to the book, right? The lore book here. Uh when reading through the characters in there. I feel like they really tried to make them more heroic. I did too. Did and I'm hoping that? I did. And I'm hoping it's a lot of just like the bias of the, the fictional character telling the story of all this because. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's yeah. I, I definitely clocked that, which is where I'm like, okay, well then the, the, are these retcons or are these inconsistencies because things like the timelines or whatever, it feels very um, romanticizing what actually happened. Yeah, exactly. And I I was reading it. And I'm like, am I miss? It was that whole thing again. Where like I've had this idea in my head that we're not great people when we're playing as vault hunters, right? Like, yeah, we're mercenaries. Yeah, uh, but but then reading that, I was like, shit, did I get it wrong? And and then I listened to some echoes and stuff, and I was like, no, I did not. No, get I'm that right. <laughs> no, yeah, like, literally, what is happening here? Are they changing it? <sighs> no, I think it's a hundred percent just so much in the in the freedom of having that like fictional buffer of like this being a, a book and canon of you know an encyclopedia of like hey we're interviewing people so these are biased accounts i think you people want their best best foot forward with that and so i i give the book the leeway of that because in the games we do see the real tangible consequences of some of the selfish shit people do um and i'm really hoping yeah. we see that with Lilith like I'm hoping we get like a dark Lilith or like a fucked up Lilith, or like whatever by the time like we get to her because it's just one of those things where it's like Neri had locked herself in the vault to get rid of this power to make sure that no one had this again because it just couldn't be used for good it just couldn't but that power is like, in the universe that is what it is and it this the powers that we won't even know about and then like i go back to maya like i'm a i'm a thought lock maya to my core like i am a maya main thought lock is my baby i will convince everyone one day that is the true meta and then someone else to take credit for it and i'll get mad about it like it's one of them where i'm just like <laughs> thought lock is my thing i love it however that's a fucked up skill you're possessing people that's what that is you are literally possessing people to kill their friends and let you get some yeah. and mechanically not the best Great. not the most morally whatever yeah. but it's fantastic yeah, yeah. and so effective and um fun absolutely fun but morally great at best <laughs> like it's just yeah <laughs> you are using that power and it, it's interesting because even like how you're looking at face of like i'm holding something in this moment like how that then translates into uh, a thought lock like seeing Ava have those powers I really want to know what they do with it and like where the the different ways that sirens use this power is what's fascinating to me like whoever has Steel's powers is probably using it differently than how Steel did like even the mechanically like they have the same end goal like whoever has a little like power like what how how Tyrene was you know phase walking was different from some of the stuff Lilith would have done with it right like power wise and so I really want to see how that manifests and I'm like can we just get like a dark siren arc for everyone like I just want because these powers are so fucked up and again that's who we're playing as 
it just we just have had people outside the narrative largely as our playable characters who come into this world and go okay i'm here for other people so this isn't my battle but i'm going to be doing this because i'm now a crimson raider and we're running around doing that fuck the raiders let's go past the raiders what are we doing now what what is that point in the universe which is why i keep going back to tales but like why reese I'm so mad. I'm still mad about recent three, but like why Reese works so well in Tales because his entire arc is I wanted to be just like Handsome Jack. And depending on how you play that can go very different ways. But like his dichotomy with Fiona is there because he has to learn, hey, maybe not good. But then he goes and becomes the same fucking person. And it just oh, it's so it's such a good arc. I just I Tales Tales did it so well. Tales really, I think, hit yeah. on the the these people are bad people, but we can still find the empathy in that found family because like they're not good people. <laughs> None of them yeah, are good exactly. people. Yeah, and that's yeah, like you were saying, the, the whole universe. You can't afford to be a yeah good per, a quote good. You person, won't survive right? if you're a good person well, in that I, universe where people yeah. just walk around these kill are, each other. Yeah, these are the borderlands. Like yeah. there is a civilized part of the universe where people come from right like and then they go out to the borderlands and it's lawless and it's hard like that's yeah. you know like i think people's backstories are like oh go to pandora go to the borderlands uh because that's where the real yeah. challenges are yeah exactly they came like anisha's like i came to pandora for action kind of thing like these lines like yeah. people know what they're there for and it's you don't you don't stay there and end up there accidentally like you either like kill or be killed you adapt to your situation you, you you know what you're doing and um i i just think there's no universe where we can we can just like hand wipe all these characters to be like it's pure like angel is making choices all through too and i could go on a whole <laughs> whole rant about how many of those are of her own volition but like she acts the hell out of some stuff that she wouldn't need to if this whole thing was like oh i'm doing this for whatever but her whole thing is why i don't mind that tana says her powers as much as like from a jack emotion inside like the character in my brain getting pissed off at that versus like the actual narrative where i'm like no this is a good decision like angel would have made sure that no matter what happened if her plan didn't work someone who would have the power to stop jack would have had it and tanis would have been the logical step for that who would have the knowledge of the key and then this and who like a hundred percent would have been her fail safe. And now that we know sirens can choose that and communicate with whoever had their power, absolutely fucking makes sense of what she would have done yeah. and why Tannis would have hit it. But Angel is very calculating that entire time. She has every step of this planned out and she doesn't say the words kill him until you're in the core. Like it's very much you need to stop Jack. You need to do this. It's about, you know, whatever. But when she's playing it up with, please tell me he didn't send Wilhelm. Like, you know, cause you know, they need the power core to go do that. And so how much of this is her being like, well, this one last time, <laughs> let's go versus, you know, she's really gaslighting everyone around her for her own specific narrative, be for good reason or not. Yeah. It's very dubious and selfish and it's, you know, sad and I love Angel, um, but I'm just saying she's not not exempt from the bad person rant <laughs> that I have in my soul. That is so wild to me because, yeah, like I've never straight up thought of her that way or anything but it's true because like you know she's the one that's looking for the vault hunters to hire yeah. or you know to bring to add to the list right like she's checking all those people out and jack even says like come on use that big brain of yours you know yeah. like she he knows how smart yeah he Angel is a tool brain for the size him. of freaking planets don't give me that i don't know kind of like sass exactly. bullshit they go back and forth and like even in yeah. tps so you have echoes oh. of like her talking about like you know there she's vetting the vault hunters or doing stuff and he talks about her sneaking down and looking at mercenary day presents early and she's like yeah it's, sorry yeah. kind of thing i'm like it wasn't like she was just locked in this fucking like building in this like little little drug pump <laughs> section he came out of the key for half this time and like this is clearly an abusive relationship and dynamic but like there's character here like this isn't a completely like i'm whatever and when you go through the art book you see so many things where they like did she have a split personality was she actually evil was she on jack's side like they went through so many iterations of her before they landed on what they did which makes sense in development but i feel like like for me i really had canon that angel angel knew lil victor deaths and she's how they faked her death like i don't think they necessarily knew it was angel but i think angel is the reason that they were able to hide it from hyperion for as long as they did and she got them out of there when she had this plane of motion and jack probably didn't find out about till through too but why 
when he knew she was alive, why this playing outside of motion is like, I don't see a way around them being able to hide that without Angel's interference there, given how involved she is in all of these other little parts of it. And, um, you yeah. know, I, I think she's playing both of them. I, and I love it. That is amazing. My mind is blown. This is like, <sighs> this is going to give me it. so many hours of thinking yes. and analyzing. Just, I'll, I'll wait for the random DMs about it because I, I, yeah. I could write a, I could write a fucking dissertation on, on the dynamic of Angel and Jack and their role in Portland's one TPS and two at that point. Cause I'm just like, it, it a hundred percent. It so many thoughts, so many thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, from, I remember, you know, like, uh, Tan is communicating to you in three, uh the exact yeah. same way that angel did and i remember just being like when it revealed right well, I, yeah. I did kind of i was starting to piece it Plug, together yeah yeah there were definitely the puzzle pieces and i was like is she a style? like yeah what's going you know like and then as soon as that happened as soon as that reveal happened i was like holy shit like that was well like of course that's how sh the, she's communicating the exact same way like that is super obvious you know like and that's the thing i love when it's wild. obvious after the fact but it's one of those things when it's happening where like people can convince themselves it's like oh just like you know plot device or this or how people are communicating now or they yeah. have this or whatever like you just dismiss it because it's so borderlands is so fast-paced you're running through you get this information as you're doing other stuff you're half paying attention because you're looting and whatever it's it's just so effective in how they do it yeah yeah exactly it. it's so cool it's it's very well done and it's I think people don't give it enough credit. They really uh, don't. They really, really don't. It's really sad. Yeah. And there's so many amazing stories told in it. There's so many amazing characters. And we're going to hopefully get like, so much gosh. more of it. I am I am hopeful about the 2K yeah. acquisition. And like it, with any type of yeah. acquisition, I'm nervous because it's just like, again, there have been layoffs that have been breaking my heart. Like so many good people that I like genuinely just like admire that i've just seen like it, it the gaming industry right now is just scary and with any type of yeah. like restructuring or you know buyouts or anything projects do get canceled and they do get stalled and i don't think it'll be like a bl4 kind of thing but i do wonder how many how many of these kind of things like these lore expansion you know concepts or things that we could theoretically have that i do worry about um, but they've been with 2K for so long that I feel like it's probably best case scenario short of suddenly being <laughs> by themselves out, be rich enough to do this, but like I don't think they'd be able to float what they needed to float to be independent again. And so it just yeah, I, I'm really hopeful. I feel like it just may not be on the timeline people want, but I, I do think that there's no universe where everything they've established isn't leading to you no, know, we're trying to build a universe out of this to have more content and have more, you know, board games and this and, you know, movies and adaptations and spinoffs and, you know, the book coming out like with the Birch Road. Like, I'm just like, I, I want it all. Yeah. I want it fucking all. I'm really excited to see where it all goes. That kind of you were talking about lore and ex like expanding the universe. But this is a thought that I've had for a while. And it's how would you feel about like having personal side quests or like dlc like the headhunter pack almost yeah. but it it's specifically to your character the character right like Ooh. being able to say you know like yeah there's these echoes that show they have a past like yeah. or that if everyone got a great dlc yeah kind, yeah exactly and you could even keep it like headhunter size or full dlc would be amazing but full like this would be amazing but i understand that like i think it could work as a headhunter if you have like those shorter bite size you know because that was something yeah. with the two dlcs that i i didn't love like i love the three dlcs i think they're fantastically well done but the two dlcs yeah. largely i just like you would get like a little snippet of lore and then like nothing would follow up like i remember in uh son of Cromax, it was like you had like the letter you could find where i was like oh what is this this tiny little bit of like info in this story? and like nothing ever ever comes of it and the dlcs so right. feel standalone in their own like okay but this is like the beach episode but also like doesn't actually count it's not in canon so like don't worry about it but then they do go oh we have talon now and he stopped drinking and whatever else but we just don't delve into it but like if you had something that was like not not forced to be like a massive dlc and let it be an exploration of those vault hunters and how they fit in that lore i think that would be really sick you're not going to hear yeah. me say no and to I, lore ever. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Well, I feel like it's, you know, like if 
we got that kind of thing in Borderlands 3 uh, and it was specific to your four characters, right? Like, so yeah. you don't have to play as Zane to go play Zane's yeah. lore thing, but, you know, it could, I think it would be interesting to have those sort of well, like ties or yeah. even, it doesn't even have to be Headhunter, but like if they sprinkle that in throughout the the game where like maybe it's even like if you're playing as Zane, you get yeah some incentive to play every character right like well this is only accessible if somebody in your group is playing a zane oh i uh, love that i because yeah it would incentivize way to have multiplayer and then do some of the more it's like it's hard because then you don't want to like pay well behind stuff and be like oh we don't have friends yeah. they have it but like then you can just play a zane you can just go play a zane character and like run through that and have it solo so it's like i think i think it could work i think people are gonna be mad about anything but i do think that it um would right. be I th- I think that could be worth it because I if they're gonna be mad about anything, do what you want, and I think the more lore the better. <laughs> more of the story, do what That's... you want if it gives me story. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Well, they could probably find a way to do that. Of like, if Zane's not in your party, then he echoes you and is just like, oh yeah. boy, oh like this yeah. problems come up. You That's know, the like, thing. there are, there are plenty uh, of ways around it. Just like them, what's game breaking at a point and first not versus what's the actual yeah. worth a payout. But like, I I definitely think it could be. You you get more out of something by playing as that character would be yeah. the ideal. I love yeah because then you're invested in that. Yeah, I know Anthony Birch, right? He kind of you know there's that very conscious decision when making Borderlands Two where they talked about like do we how much do we make the Vault Hunters talk? Do yeah. they react to things in the world? Not really, you know. Like yeah, and then later after pre sequel, it was like well crap like yeah. yeah we should have you know and i shouldn't have killed nisha he yeah i uh, know i love that he said that. i'm like you know you know you know this bad you bitch know. i can't believe you in a fucking side mission that people don't even know it's the end of a yeah. series of a side mission too that like just wreck on just fine and then jack's reaction to it, i'm just like i i appreciate the acknowledgement that that was a mistake that's all that's all i just yes. that, that's it that's the the hill i don't need to die on because it's already been acknowledged and it's fine right it's like <sighs> you understand but it's no he didn't know he didn't know how amazing she would be when he, you know, like made her. No, you don't. Cause, Cause it's a thing you don't, again, it's like with the, with the Jack thing, you don't know how then much that resonates becomes such yeah. a temple for something that maybe you wouldn't have killed him in the first game you introduced him in. If you thought this would be like suddenly the best video game villain on all these lists, you know, like if people were that in love, yeah. but he's dead and it's, we should keep him dead. <laughs> yes, I agree. Don't bring him back. Don't bring him we back. Have Timothy. We have, you know, like there's, yeah. <laughs> the eye roll Ooh, I, I i have feelings about something we don't have time to get into my feelings about something but I, I got feelings about he he's fine he can stay whatever it's fine let people enjoy things it's fine <laughs> oh i hate it <laughs> i just Funny. it's it's my inner jack rage i feel like it's the like when you it's again it goes like the dd when you're you, the character lives in your head when i cosplay jack when i have to do all the show like i just i know there's a little like i have my jack brain pop up where i have to be like shut the fuck up go back to your jail you don't this isn't about you it's fine timothy ignites some of those emotions and it's mostly just a fandom related uh, one but i'm just like there's just like a rage <laughs> <laughs> and listen he's so fun to play in tps it's not even about like the playable care i just like i yeah want to strangle him and i hate him and want him to die <laughs> wow that is that's wild yeah i feel people like don't expect three... it from me people don't expect it from me because yeah. i'm a jack bitch so they think that i would love him but I, there's the thing there's a difference between a tim bitch and a jack bitch there's a very yeah, yeah. there's a very specific difference <laughs> that is true i mean yes because tim is Timothy's very, very different from Jack, right? Mm-hmm. Like he's he's a body double. That's it. You know, yeah. like he has He's got some of the DNA in him. He has his little moments. I do stand by my yeah. conspiracy theory where I would have made um Jackpot like the end being a SOS button they could pull later to be like, aha, he was alive the whole time. Because it was like such a weird yeah. way to end and whatever. I don't think they're gonna do that. I just think that's a good backup plan to be like yes this is our emergency we're at borderland 7 and people are so mad and there's a thing and we need it makes sense to bring him back like you you've had this built in to be like this could be a thing um for the break glass but i i don't think they will or should and i don't think they want yeah. to either it's one of those things where it's like very plausible but also cheapens the death right it like it does but would it cheapen if it happened so much later yes it would don't check see this is a jack rage absolutely right yeah. it would cheapen the death get out of here i don't want you <laughs> because then like 
when you think about it, it's just like these fuckers <gasps> killed my daughter. You know, like of course I'm going to face off with them at the vault. Dude, like, yeah, absolutely. No, that's it, the thing. Him the, making his know, manic like, decisions for it. Absolutely, that's how he would have died because he yeah. would have been like, "No, you will regret denying me my vengeance. We are accelerating this because this can't have been for nothing." And he makes from that point on every decision is a bad decision. Like he he fucks up because yeah. he's playing with his emotions. It's why it works, and it's why it goes back to, like, he, guys, he loved Angel. He was a shitty person that doesn't fucking, like, he he had emotions there. That does not make what he did okay. It, I'm not endorsing child abuse. I'm saying that what he, his motivations aren't just, like, I'm using her because it's a siren thing. Like, in the echoes we get in three, he's, like, horrified when he sees these tattoos. Like, it is, he's worried. Yeah. He takes her to a doctor. Like, it is heartbreaking. And it... It it would cheapen it, and you need to stay in jail in my brain because <laughs> I just oh my god, this man ruined my life. As I sit here with all my jack shit around me, I'm like, I don't know why people think that I'm. It's fine. <laughs> why I'm down bad for handsome Jack? It's like mystery. <laughs> Yeah, we just find him, and now he's like overweight. He's just like eating Cheetos in the basement. He's, he's just perfected like, oh, the yeah, dad guys- bod. It's fine. It's like how he's yeah. coping. It's fine. He's yeah. He he realized he was bad at video games and had to get really good at them, and so he has a new online alias, and it's fine. He's no longer interested in megalomaniac, you know, business. He's just like it's it's fine. It's it's he's cool. Like, What's the point anymore? I never like guns anyway. <laughs> Being shot at was stressful. It's fine. Yeah. There's no point. He's in his depression arc. He's in his he's in a sad girl summer. Like it's fine. It's he will get there. Maybe he's a hero yeah. all along. We don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that is what I hold to. I kind of genuinely think I think that he has to be. And I think in, like I don't think in Borderlands four, but I, same. I think I could see five or six at being a point being like, "LOL, um, y'all fucked up by not like Jack do his thing." Um, yeah, yeah. Which I love. definitely agree. Um, do you have? Uh, you don't have to. I don't puts on the spot, but do you have a top five game time capsule kind of list you want to throw out there? If yes. not, I can give you time to think about it, and you can we can pick up you know later if you want, but. If you had some games, I even I was thinking about this because, you know, I knew we were going to be talking mm-hmm. and I know this yeah. is part of it. And I was it trying stresses to think, people out. So, <laughs> yeah, like especially in the moment to like say it, because, of course, like your mood changes and you're just like, well, today, right. Like, if I'm drunk at a convention and some, when this question comes up, I'm my answers are <laughs> different. <laughs> It does not. Yeah. And just disclaimer to anyone talking to me at like a fucking Weston at a con one day. If this if this question comes up, my list is going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah. When like for me too, because I don't want to just say like Borderlands one, two, three, pre sequel. You know, yeah. like, that's four out of five. Well, that's that, the thing. You know, it's like, a line between favorite game one. and like the the ones you would like put on this. Uh, what if it means like oh this ad- advanced gaming or this is quintessential to this or who i am to the core what means most like yeah. people interpret it in a lot of ways but it's hard to be like yeah to put um borderlands one borderlands two tales from the borderlands borderlands <laughs> three tiny penis wonderlands like like well, that, that sounds good which is basically what k6 did <laughs> but, like, oh yeah yeah that's right yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. he did yeah. have hades on there it's yeah. so hard yeah yes that's true great they i saw the technical the yeah the technical demo cell yeah yeah the test yeah yeah um yeah but like for me too like borderlands they're each one does something different where i'm like i would be so devastated because my i think the funnest vault hunters are in pre-sequel oh yeah the end game in that like isn't great you know but r.i.p 2k australia yeah (laughs) yeah Uh, yeah exactly like I thought it was still great. There was still fun. There was so many hidden things in there, though. So many Easter eggs, so many bosses you could find, like, yeah, piecing things together or like going and finding a hidden area that's just like all of a sudden here's your fighting. I can't remember anybody's name in that. But like, you know, there's that giant crag, what, Kragen, the Kragen. Yeah, the the uh, oh God, I can't even say a name, but the oh, God, people are going to drag me. The it starts with an I, I, W, J kind of like name. You would you you would jar like i i'm like i can't yeah. remember. i haven't had coffee or adderall today okay. apparently my adderall's out of stock now so they're fucking gaslighting me anyway uh, so like i gotta do that so th- th- this is my this is my hall pass for not remembering the the massive crack yeah. is same but yes like borderlands 3 there's the just mechanically oh, so yeah. tight 
Like so good, so well done, so, so much fun. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, I think it's great. And then Borderlands Two, of course, story wise, right? Like and yeah, I this is one of my wishes. You know, like remaster remasters are fine um but like yeah. what if they just took all of the borderlands games instead of like a handsome jack you know i had the handsome collection what if it they literally made it just one game and you could play any of the vault hunters from any of those games and it's just oh like God. just like in pre-sequel where they're telling the story you know like yeah hey this is what happened uh and and then you could have like dialogue throughout and uh a plus a plus have it be, I think that'd be so entertaining. Uh, it really be like, would be. Wait a minute, you weren't there, Athena. Like, well, okay, shut up. For this story, I was. You know, for this like, story, <laughs> yeah, they do their like they do for TVHM, yeah, for um, TPS, absolutely. For yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Like, and I think that's one of the most devastating things that they didn't continue into three, where like playing old true Vault Hunter mode and Ultimate Vault Hunter mode didn't change any dialogue. Yeah. Like, we totally should have gotten like a. All right, let's run this through again. How this happening? You know, like there's such little changes you could have done. There are, and I'm like, at what point is it just like you have to kill your darlings? Like, what was planned? And yeah. like, I would love to just You're read right. a whole encyclopedia about like the things they had planned for these games that they never got to do because X Y Z. Like, I feel like yeah. it, would, it would make me sad. So like, maybe not because I would be like, well, we could have had. But also, like, it would be so cool <laughs> to think about the the shit like that. And then I would feel better when I see really bad takes on Twitter. <laughs> okay. All right. So time capsule. I can do this. Time capsule. I'm gonna say Borderlands you. Three right now. Because... Okay. Good choice. Good choice. Good choice. We love it. Tight, you know. Very tight. Uh, Bio, Ooh, Bioshock or Bioshock Infinite? It's hard. I feel I like think I'm gonna go Infinite. I mechanically Infinite's better by far. Right. Like, it's it's it. Bioshock One is a masterpiece, but it's a little bit broken. But the fact that it's still a masterpiece, even though it's a little bit broken, is why I feel like it's it's so to its core. But Infinite is, you know. I feel like people are doing the thing where they like decide like something that's popular they don't like anymore at a point because I see people suddenly shitting on Infinite oh, and yeah. I'm like no Infinite is fantastic there's a reason it is got us all by a chokehold like I and I say this biasly because I know I possibly Liz but like my god yes. Bioshock like Bioshock yes. Infinite is emotionally devastating in so many rewarding ways and it's um you know also Troy Baker just fantastic and yeah the best the best yeah. the best we love him i yeah Big fan. i wish he was he should just be in everything <laughs> he should he pretty much is but he should just continue to do that and be more of it like honestly like just uh, troy baker and do my veins that's all we need yeah i just this i realized this last week or two weeks ago that the reason he probably wasn't in three is reese uh did they ever officially say why so they had a public um thing on twitter where they argued about why um so there's that but i it's the sag strike he says he was never asked and then they came back so no we asked you and then you said no and he's like okay um no but you asked me to do this non-union and you didn't ask me you asked me like later and i can't do it non-union because um yeah. i'm union so why are you suddenly making these games non-union no and then there was like a great area and then they like chilled out so I don't know. I do know when I met him recently and I pulled out a Hyperion hat from the sign because like we never really meet people at cons. And I was like, we just like we had to. We had like a Bioshock stuff. And I was like, I've, I was dressed as Ellie and I was just like, I have bullshit for you to sign. So I don't think he expected it. And he's like, let me see the bullshit. And I pulled out my Hyperion hat and he went, shut the fuck up. Not bullshit. Like he was just gushing yeah, about Borderlands. He yeah, he fucking loves it. And so I yeah. I don't think there's a universe where he would have chosen to not come back if he yeah. could have come back. So, uh, yeah, what I was because I was doing a little research and it's like Texas is a uh, right to work state, which pretty much prohibits uh, discrim like I, just, I feel yeah. no, like yeah. they can't yeah. refuse to hire somebody because they're not a part of a union. So yeah. and I think, though, a union can say like, well, you can't work with non-union actors as someone as someone in company. sag yes there is the national agreement right. that is like very like you we can't work on non-union projects you can have like waivers in union projects so like basically make them feel non-union where like you're not paying people like there are different types of agreements yeah. you can like come to but it's very much the union can't protect you if you're working non-union projects which is the kind of drive it so we're not supposed to you can get in trouble for taking non-union projects and yeah, so because exactly. then no one has incentive to go union if we're just taking non-union projects and it's just like it's it's a whole cycle of it but it's 
complicated i'm sure in that level voice acting it's yeah but texas is yeah 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 like i'm i'm one i'm 99 percent sure that that's why he didn't come back was because well obviously telltale was doing tales from the borderlands so yeah. they were able to work they were like they're not in texas uh yeah gearbox is in texas and they can't they have to hire people you know like uh if they only hired union actors, then they would get in trouble. I think so, also, though, it's, it's like with thing. the with big budget stuff, like it's it's just it gets complicated. Anyway. It gets complicated. Yeah. And so I'm not going to pretend to like know like what the contracts like, you know, what that argument back and forth was. But he was very specific yeah. when he talked about it. And I'm just I but Gearbox and 2K were like, no. So I mean, like, who who knows? Who's to say? Who's to say? Yeah. yeah. And I I honestly didn't mind Reese's voice change. And Ray Chase I, is great. I almost feel like it's kind of fitting. It. He's yeah. great. It's the characterization of Reese that bothers me in three. I just feel like it, Fair. that's it. It's not Ray Chase's fault. It's not like I'm not. I, I don't even know who to point fingers after that. It's just it's just the fact he was in it. I feel like just like without expanding on why and this and Sasha, like it just none Cheapened of it felt. A little. It, yeah. It cheapened his thing and make him be like, no, Lazy Riverland and whatever. I just like. But I he just, was he was so handsome jack though you know like, he he's, wasn't like, embodying. He's, just, he's a bad cosplay of handsome jack especially in new tales he's yeah. just sitting here like i just i can't oh my god i just i can't i can't i have too many feelings about Reese strong fork and they're not good i it's love fair. that man i almost cosplayed reese <laughs> instead of jack and so i'm just like the rage oh. i have in my body i just like anyway i think because they've <laughs> said you know like jack it, handsome jack's ai isn't in him anymore right he destroyed it I he think destroyed that's what it and then right well no canonically they said he removed the ai but we do have the jackhammer which is powered by his ai so canonically he would have kept the drive with that being implied in the game oh that's true yeah but i was just i don't know i there's a part of me that would have loved to have it be like well, AI took over Reese, you know, like, and yeah. now it's almost like a Krieg thing where it's like you're hearing yeah. him, but also Jack is control. You know, like there's yeah. those different, those conflicting voices. Anyway. Absolutely. Uh, Portal 2. <laughs> Perfect game. Perfect game. Yes, correct. Correct. Perfect correct. game. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, yes. Stardew Valley, maybe. Okay. Okay. I love that. First one to say unique. that. I love it. I think it's. I think it's just because me and my wife play it all the time. So I love that. And we oh, always go back to it. So. I love that. I really need <laughs> my um the one of my friends, the director of marketing at Beacon, um, I think that's the title right now. Um, he tweeted out the other day that was <laughs> it was so cool. he was like, something's wrong with me. Like, why is playing Stardew Valley so stressful? Like this is like <laughs> like I can't. And I was like, <laughs> I love you, you precious soul. Like I I love I feel that. I feel that. Because I get it. And I'm also like, I don't know if there's not enough time to do anything. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I don't know how to, like, I, I can't get into the way that I feel like I should be able to because I'm, like, overthinking it. So I get it. But it was just, like, the most pure. He was like, yeah. this is such a stressful game. And I'm like, I love you so much. I can, uh, shout out, Grant. I can definitely feel that. Yeah. It's way, you know, they call them cozy games, but it's like, they're not. They're not. They destroy us. You know. Yeah, I saw somebody making an argument that Fallout Four is a cozy game. Uh, that's because a take. I'll, yeah, and I was like, "That's so interesting." And then as I thought about it, I was like, "How many hours did I spend building like my little settlement and yeah. doing like little farming things?" I was like, "Okay, well, technically, all right." Yeah, <laughs> Sims Four stressful, absolutely stressful. You don't understand. Yes. Oh, Sims two, yeah, let's exactly. be real. Sims two is stressful because you do anything and everything caught fire and there's a burglar and then your kids yeah. are gone. Sims four will let you do anything to anyone and it's just like okay, well that's fine, carry on. There's no nothing bad ever happens here unless you install mods and then that's your own fault. <laughs> then yeah, then you have no one to blame but yourself. Exactly, exactly. I can't think of a fifth game. I, the fifth, it's always number three or five where people panic. Yeah, it is always yeah. right. Yeah. So yeah, Borderlands like Three, Portal Two, you know, like, Stardew Valley. What was the other one? Bioshock. Bioshock Infinite. Infinite. Yeah. 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 I feel like yeah, yeah. Like I'll just throw on like I, only because it's on my mind right now. It's like Fallout Four, but I haven't revisited that in so long that no, like, feel, it's hard. I don't know what because that's the thing. I yeah. if you ask me what games I love, I'll like go on. I'll have a list of a billion <laughs> games. Yeah. But then the moment this question, you're just like, 
it, it's just the stress. The stress of number five. It's okay. I'll let you redact it. If you think of yeah. one, if you think of one later, we can put a little little editor's note. <laughs> little little yeah, voice. Please just, do. Oh, number five <laughs> is Baldur's Gate. Like, <laughs> kind of like, it's fine. Are you excited for the Lazarus effect? I am excited for the Lazarus effect. I'm like sitting here, I'm like, now I want to talk about it. I'm like, I can't. <laughs> I know. That's why I was like, maybe I shouldn't bring this up. But like, I had, I feel like I haven't heard you talk about it on the show. No, so I, I haven't like, yet. I haven't oh. yet. I haven't talked about that. I haven't talked about Judas. Yeah. I haven't talked about like fucking anything. I like, I can't. Okay. How much time do yeah. I actually? <sighs> or not Lazarus. What? It's not called the Lazarus effect. What's it called? The Lazarus project? Yeah, it's like the project or like whatever. You, I know what you're talking about. Les- yeah. fucking... Ken Levine's yeah. next thing. Yeah. The, um, or you're talking Judas. Oh, wait a Was minute. That, yeah, I'm that talking is Judas. Judas. Shit. We're both Judas idiots. Project, right? Wasn't that the old name for it or something? I like fucking. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Okay, well, I'll rewind that. We both looked something. <laughs> but no, I know what you're fucking talking about. <laughs> what is it? It's Judas. It's oh fucking. It's a fucking. It's the Ghost Story games. Is there another one with it? But like, no, I'm so fucking excited. And they don't have a release date for it yet. It's driving me insane. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just called Judas now. Yeah. That's right. Okay. I think that was the code oh, name for it at a point. Yeah. And then my brain is just like split the two. That's but, right. Um, yeah. Because also yeah. like it's with Ghost Story Games and they weren't either way. Yes. I'm fucking excited for Judas. And that's where I'm just like, I don't. Where's I like had. I saw this thread ages ago that I need to find that I'll like send you that just like enraged me, but also like made me excited at the same time. Cause I'm like, I miss these kind of debates for talking about anything, but people are like, it's just Bioshock. Like, why are they doing it? I'm like, but it's not though. But also like, would that be a bad thing? I feel like we need more games like Bioshock. Yeah. Like I don't. Well, and like Ken, right. It's Ken. Yeah. Ken's back and he's making the game. Like he's, he's doing the thing. And so... they're like, well then why did you like get rid yeah. of like the, like why wouldn't you have just made Bioshock four and like blah, 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 whatever. I'm like one, we'll be assume we're not making Bioshock four Two, Um, yeah. It wasn't time. It wasn't time. Like that was fucking ten years ago, eleven years ago, however long at this point. Like we, it's, it's now time. There's a part because if Ken's not involved in by bio, the next Bioshock, then I don't know if I. Well, I'll play it. Of course I will. But like this is him going off and doing his own thing is like even better to me. Thank you so much for coming on, though. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Thanks happy for having fucking me. Birthday. This was so much fun, dude. No, you well, carved out part you. of your birthday to come talk nerd shit. It's the best, and I'm so excited. This I'm is so excited. Literally, like, because even how I justified it to my wife, because we were going to talk last night, and I was like, "It's the night before my birthday, and it would mean so much to me if I could talk for like three hours about Borderlands shit with somebody." You know, like, and she's I like, love that. Yeah, I that's, love that. That's perfect. So, like, so changing it to actually be on my birthday is like a birthday present to me <laughs> that's so sweet no, we'll have to do it again we'll definitely have to do it again and it's it's funny because i'll talk to you yeah. tomorrow and i know that but like it's gonna yes. be yeah it's gonna, We're gonna be gonna build you a character it's gonna be great it's gonna be great nice bright and early be yeah. be nice and chaotic about it but that's that's the soul of borderlands anyway so if i'm not building a chaotic character i'm doing it wrong probably exactly yeah. i love exactly. it i love the chaos i love bunkers and badass i love ttrpgs i love borderlands i love just the com- you know good community it's amazing good it's part amazing. of the community <laughs> there's there are lovely people everywhere and we love and appreciate yeah. the lovely people who are there <laughs> that's our show this week thank you so much for joining us on dlc required we will see you next week as always you can find links in the, the descriptions for both riley previous episodes my links whatever you need we'll see you next time stay classy kiddos bye